Well, the Cinderella story has come to an end. The Netherlands are eliminated, but France continues their glorious run here at the Overwatch World Cup 2019. I'm Golden Boy along with Bren, reinforced in Sideshow, and uh, we will attempt uh, to break things down. But before we do that, because there's something that's really just bothering me, Bren, why do you have a whiteboard here? So glad you asked, Golden Boy, because when I was a young boy, roaming through the streets of Gloucester. Where are we going? When I was sleeping in Tesco warehouses, you know, I always wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to create things. I'm left-handed. You know, they say left-handed people, more creative. So I figured, you know, we don't have a player at a match, but I figured, why not create my own? So I'm going to use this opportunity to try and create my own player of the match, sponsored by Brennan Hook. And uh, <laughs> what? you guys can just talk about the highlights. I'm actually going to draw who I thought was the player of the match. Okay. All right. That's how uh, we're going to do this. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, well, let's just run the highlights of that game while Bren does his interpretive drawing, perhaps? I, I, I don't know. It was know. a good match. Yeah, I guess it was so. a good match. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a great match for sure. Let's run through the top level stuff here. I mean, France, you know, they came out booming in the beginning. They looked like they were gonna, you know, roar right through this. Netherlands gave them a, a, a good fight as well in Li Zhang to start things off. Yeah, definitely. It was your classic duo of Basility and Brusen, I think, for the Netherlands that were performing throughout this series. But really, the deeper we got, the more that France looked phenomenal. Soon as Leaf took control of this series, Leaf Sparrow has been outrageous. But even then, I do think that the Netherlands did a great job at trying to shut down France because we saw multiple times that they played so well with Bruce and with this shield, blocking off Leap there, getting the kill onto him to secure Blizzard World and tying up the series. But also multiple times on Volska. Okay, this shot. This, oh. is this entire map, though. This entire unreal. map was outrageous. Soon had more yeah. final blows. Three times more final blows. I, I think he had sixty percent. I think he had sixty percent kill participation. Am I yeah, right? Yeah. He had fifteen final blows. The whole of the Netherlands had five final blows. He dominated them. That's Put insane. In the ground. It's insane to see Soon do that. You know, again, this guy's been competing in Overwatch for such a long time now. I, I commentated him in other games previously to this. The guy's been at, on the grind for such a long time, and just just to see him pop off here once again and prove why he's so good. Definitely Amazing. the star player of France, and he's a big force to be reckoned with. It is for. done. Oh, uh, <sighs> come! We're trying to do analysis here, and you're you're drawing. Are you oh, ready? What is going on? For the Brennan Hook player of the match. Oh. Th this is disastrous. Come on, man. It's, it's got to be one of the... Okay. Has to be well, you guess who it is? What? It, it's what a, is that? It's a. It's just a French... How like, are I we guess supposed to know yes. who that is? Yes. I mean, well, can you can you not tell? He's got the beret. Yeah. Because he's French. I guess. But there's he's got six the, players on the team. He has the, the baguette because he is French. But they're all French. Who is it? Well, it, it's tech. How is How are we supposed Wait, to what? get... How are we supposed to guess that it was tech? Yeah, give him the dunce cap, Golden Boy. You know what? Give I'm tired. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Real Absolute quick. Absolute nonsense. It's, what, what, we brought it back. We brought it back. Tired of it. Tired of it. Tired of it. Unbelievable you... behavior from you, Brennan. I I'm very say, disappointed. Though, Hold I on. Say, I, I have to say this real quick, real quick, real quick. Because while we've been up here talking for such a long time, and we're, you know, rambling away, yelling at each other, Bren looks like a fool. Here's the thing. I want to know what's going on with the fans. Oh, yeah. Dare I say, give me a single, give me a single right here, that I want to hear from the Pulse. That's right, folks. T-Mobile Fan Pulse. Let's go. All right, we got some bits here to read. Some fans sharing their love for the energy in the arena. You'd feel like this was the final match. Well, every match has been pretty hyped so far. We only had two. Yeah, and the French fans are always outrageous. You know, they cheer on their, their home teams. Paris next year, the Overwatch League is going to be nuts. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. We And by the way, people in the arena, we hear you. We hear you. So if you could cheer louder, that would be actually fantastic. I'm not sure they could cheer any louder. That arena is I'm just saying, if there's, one thing, if there's one thing Golden Boy knows how to do, it's a cheap pop. Uh, <laughs> then we got uh, the contenders players really showing up here. And I actually do want to mention that because we have a lot of great new talent that have been showing up here at the World Cup and 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 look at Netherlands, right? Like just sure. a whole team and also, full of unsigned players. This is why I actually agree with uh, Bren's player of the match, as stupid as it sounded, because Tech is a fantastic player that's coming out of that tier two. You don't think it's soon? I mean, soon was good, sure, but Tech has been and fantastic. Then, and then he, here's okay. a big one, though, because Caffeine wants to get down to the brass tacks here. He wants either one of you guys to dye your hair. Uh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. We, we had a challenge going on where whoever had the most subs on twitch.tv slash brand or twitch.tv slash sideshow. Are you, did um, you really just do that? <laughs> I did indeed. You know, you can follow our channel. Be a professional. Channel. But uh, if we, whoever had the most subs before BlizzCon got to dye the other person's hair. Unfortunately, Johnny made a secondary challenge, and now we both have to dye our hair.
That's going to be taking place after BlizzCon. Okay, well, I think for the sanity Sweden of everyone beats here. beats UK once more. Yeah, I think for the sanity of us all, let us just move on. Also, another thing we want you guys to do is share with us the T-Mobile MVP, who you think it is, because T-Mobile wants you, the fans, to help decide this year's Overwatch World Cup Most Valuable Player. And once the semifinal matches begin later today, you can vote for the T-Mobile MVP by using either the Twitch overlay or Twitter with the hashtag T-Mobile MVP and your player's battle tag. Be sure to keep up with all the Overwatch World Cup action with T-Mobile, whose network now reaches farther than ever before. Shout out to XQC. Um, so, like, hey, are, are you a host? Or I, didn't, or? I didn't read that at all. That came from the top of my, <laughs> top of my head. Yeah. That was all, listen, there's one thing I know how to do. It's talk about T-Mobile. Okay, well, here's the schedule and uh, what we're going to be checking out because coming up next, oh. It's going to be South Korea taking on the Ooh. United States of America, folks. This is it. The moment we've all been waiting for. I cannot believe that we're coming down to this. But for now, though, we're going to send it over to Emily, who has Coach Arrow standing by to get his thoughts before this big semifinal match. Thank you, Alex. I'm down here with Arrow, the head coach of Team USA. Make some noise for Team USA, you guys. The energy here is unreal, and man, this lineup is so stacked. You guys are doing so well. And yesterday was the first time Team USA beat South Korea. So, Arrow, what was going through your head back then, and do you think you can do it again? I mean, it definitely felt great to beat Team South Korea. I mean, they're a fantastic team, and I think it's a huge milestone for any team. So to, be, um, to beat them 3-0 was incredible. You know, we're feeling really confident. We feel like our prep was good, and we're ready to do it again. Now, so many fans, analysts, and a lot of you know, players actually think that Team USA are gonna take it all the way home. So what do you guys think? What do you have to do to possibly beat Team China? Yeah. I think the key for us is, you know, we need to we need to keep up our confidence. We're an extreme, you know, right now we're an extremely good team. We've got some incredible assistant coaches with us that have been helping us, you know, this whole time. Um, and, you know, we, we feel really good about it. So as long as we keep up our, our style and our confidence, I think we're gonna take it. Awesome. Thank you, Arrow, and best of luck to Team USA. All right, you guys, back to the desk. Thank you so much, Emily. Team USA ready to go here against South Korea. The salty runback, some might say, for South Korea because they did lose to Team USA in the group stages. And I guess while we're here, you know, let's just discuss, like, who do we think is going to win this? And Josh, because you're not wearing a dunce cap, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I think I've got to go with the prevailing wisdom here of Team USA. They were able to do it yesterday, and I think they play a tighter, more disciplined style. This meta, weirdly, doesn't seem to suit Team South Korea. It's a really bad meta for having very aggressive support players, mm. and generally players that like to play a little bit looser. Your Carpes and Haxals of the world, and IDK and Bedosin. It doesn't seem to fit their style. So even though a fantastic roster and all of that history, are definitely yeah. the team to beat coming in. I've got to predict Team USA. Okay, well, Team USA for Josh, but but Bren, they, they lost yesterday. Surely they went back, looked at the tape. The Denmark game, they, they looked like they were getting their bearings together. What do you think about South Korea here? I don't think they've got it in them to beat the United States of America. He says while I, wearing a dunce I cap. I do not think they've got <laughs> it in them to beat the United States of America, Golden Boy. I think that the United States of America Need I say, I mean, they, they, they just look incredibly potent right now. They have an understanding of the game, of the meta, the way it's played. They can flex over the variety of compositions. The coaching staff is behind them as well. They've got Junkbuck, they got Harsha. Harsha used to be the coach for the Vancouver Titans, now the Houston Outlaws. They got Junkbuck, coach for the San Francisco Shock. And now they've got Aero as well, who was the previous mm. coach for Team USA and now of Dallas. I think they've got everything necessary to beat them for a second time in a row. And South Korea, honestly, they look a little bit, dare I say, washed. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, here's whoa. the thing. Here's the thing. Whoa. As a guy who calls himself the golden boy, one cannot argue with gold. And it's for that reason that I have three gold medals right here. And these oh, three gold on. medals you you are? will represent what I think is going to happen because South Korea didn't just win once. They didn't just win twice. Let me get this real fast. Hold on. Give me a second here. It's a little... It's a little, <laughs> a little they won three times. And they're looking to make it into a fourth no. gold medal, so they're going to be, no, no, they no, no, could no, no, beat no, no, the no. USA here. Am calm I crazy? Down, calm down, calm down. Unfortunately, I've been in the back, okay? I've been chatting with everyone in the back. 
And unfortunately, I've already read the script. I've already read the script. I know who's going to win this match. So uh, I, I figured since you're, since you're already being so proud and all, I'll already give you a taste of what's coming for you. And this is the bronze medal, of course. South wow. Korea, it's not happening this year. I'm, I'm sorry, mate. It's all about the United States of America. Wow. So take this. Uh, with your gold medal, South Korea, and uh, have fun, mate. I'll tell wow. you what, Listen. this is making me want South Korea to win now. Runs, boy. <laughs> Come here. There you go. What? Make I the refuse. Dunce cup. This is Make ridiculous. Cup. I'm Listen, a professional. 3v1. I'm a global Three icon one. Three and a national think treasure. The United States are going to be taking it here. You're the only one who's going for South Korea. All right, well, you know what? We might as well just bring out the teams. Ladies and gentlemen in the arena, put your hands together for South Korea. Yesterday, South Korea lost to Team USA, but in the interview earlier on, Bedosin did say that they were going to beat USA 3-0 in this match. Yeah, we like to make fun of the situation and all. Obviously, they lost to the United States yesterday, but you have to keep in mind to be serious about the fact that they've won the World Cup all three times prior. Oh, and this is a super stacked lineup. I mean, Cho Yobin, Architect, both Overwatch League champions this year. So this is a super stacked lineup. Obviously, Carpe as well. We know him for his big history of popping off in big moments. So obviously, this is not a team to underrate. And I mean, there I say they might even be favorites despite the fact that United States, the United States won it. I think it's incredibly arguable. The individual skill is absolutely there. I would say individually on a pound for pound basis, this is easily the best team that we have in the World Cup. They eclipsed the United States by quite a while. But the USA is just playing so tightly together, and we have yet to see that from Team South Korea. Unless Krusty has really been going over them and enforcing this discipline, I'm worried about Team SK. Well, their opponents are certainly ready. The fans in the arena are ready to go. So put your hands together for the United States of America! This kind of synergy that he has with the force of superstar Sinatra, who's also playing on the team, has been helping the United States get a lot of these wins in the World Cup today. The pre existing synergy, the fact that these guys are the champions, remember, they come from the San Francisco shop, they won the last Overwatch, uh, Overwatch League championship. I think this kind of synergy that they've got working together, the Portless kind of coaching staff that I mentioned before that they're working under, is the difference maker right now for the United States. And there's only so many years of disappointment that this team can put up with before finally, finally having a serious shot now at taking. And I think especially this year, the hunger you see in these young players right here. In all prior World Cup, you've seen the United States of America come in with a lot of pressure on their shoulders, trying to live up to the expectations. But this year, Super leading the charge alongside Sinatra. This is a squad that really wants the gold medal, and they're proving it with their hunger. And the United States of America, this team has yet to drop a map in the Overwatch World Cup 2019, which is crazy. They have been pushed to the limit, but as yet have not broken. But this is singular limb. That it's do or die right now. That's right. It doesn't matter that they've got to this point. If they don't perform here, it could all slip out of their grasp so easily. Now, all jokes aside, this team is looking like a force to be reckoned with. It is the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. For now, we're going to send it over to your commentators. It's going to be the combination of Uber and Mr. X. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. There are very few matchups in the Overwatch universe that stoke the fires of rivalry just like this one. USA, South Korea, for years the United States have been trying to fight for supremacy here at the World Cup. For years they have failed, but in the grand final only one of these two teams will be present. But I feel like every year we say like, oh, you know, this is the one, right? South Korea, they look vulnerable, right? And every time we the see time this is match, now, fam. they come out on top. But I feel like if there was a time, it is now, right? Uh, you have Super Sinatra, Ma, three members of the San Francisco Shock who won the Overwatch League this year. You have some good young North American talent as well with like Corey, KSF, and Space. And I, I feel like this is their moment. Like this is their time to get it done. And up until this point, South Korea have faltered on multiple occasions. We even witnessed it, of course, covering their match against France. I think we want to reiterate what was talked on the desk about this team playing a little bit fast and loose, especially the DPS and the support. You know, Bedoshin's going for a lot of that Arna play uh, recently as well. A lot of switch-ups 
in the support role. And of course, Carpe's Hanzo not something you really get treated too often, but maybe it's not always the right call. The US are so tight, they are so disciplined. And on Busan, that's who we're gonna see if they've got what it takes to go all the way. Let's see what both teams decide to do compositionally. When we casted the one game with uh, South Korea against France a little bit earlier, they ran a lot of like Baptiste Anna, like Larissa Hogg. They didn't really show off Chayobin Sigma. Now this looks like more like the standard. They will play the double shield, they'll play the Reaper and the Doom Fist. We're gonna get to see Sinatra on Tracer here to open it up. That is an absolute throwback for Sinatra. In fact, that's the hero he debuted in the Overwatch League on as well. Rhino's right gonna work around the right-hand side of the map and see if he can start pressuring, especially the front line is here, but Architect has already gotten in and dealt with Moth. That means the United States don't have the capacity to retreat now. They can only go forward, but they get the trade. Architect is down. Carpe looking to try and make short work of Super, but he is forced to pull the plug and Wraith walk away. Look at the teleport into the back. Keep an eye on that one. Carpe again goes in, looking for more, and Space is down. And what you're trying to do with the Tracer here is to potentially get a pick off, and now you see Team USA trying to get the front line of South Korea out of the equation. They're pushing them back further away from the point. Tracer just pestering in the back line, but you don't have that insta-kill potential with that no doom fist for Team USA. They're able to back South Korea off of the point. Yeah, it's, it's tougher for the United States to find first picks in these fights, but if they can hang around long enough, they prevail. Sinatra's already built a pulse bomb, and he sticks it right <laughs> to Architect. He tried to paint to the skies, but not even the clouds would save him. This is Sinatra-level spawn camp action, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, the United States relents, Let South Korea move out. But Super has a supercharger, Mana uses oh. his first. And he uses it really early, and Team USA can probably speed boost out of this and just break line of sight, as that probably was a little bit too early there for Mano to use that. Dead Blossom from Corey, nets him Mano, main tank down for South Korea, but Space follows. Snatcher trying to work his way from the right-hand side, it's time for the Dead Blossom here, though, from Carpe, Sound Barrier will answer it from Mock. South Korea need to wait that one out. Now the Meteor Strike for Architect. He's looking for Super and he's found him. A Rocket Punch is going to lay Moth quite low. South Korea still looking to try and put the point back in their control. The US will stall this out as long as they can. Sinatra will get on, be able to get a touch here on Tracer, not able to get the recall off. So that'll be all the percentage they earned with their first hole there for Team USA. So 53%. And counting. I wonder if you see Sinatra go over, play the Doomfist, or you're going to stay on this Tracer, at least for now. Another Pulse another, Bomb? I mean, yeah, I guess you're going to go halt with the Pulse Bomb yet again. That's going to be the play. Where does Sinatra take this? Last time it was Architect. The Doomfist could not escape. Don't know what he was looking for there. He tried to drop it down, and IDK came straight past. Left him a landmine, and he was none the wiser. It's a 4v4 in his fight until Mana went down, and the United States looked down good. So yeah, much so that Architect has to scoot on out. And, and they do the same exact thing as uh, you see Sinatra get a clean up on the Architect there. They, they, he throws the Pulse Bomb on the ground, the Hulk comes through. Ina Kane lands right on top of it, can't do anything about that. He gets taken out, so Sinatra definitely causing problems. And we, you know, with some of the bulkier targets here, you're able to farm this Pulse Bomb pretty quick. You see, just use the Pulse Bomb, pick up in a limb right after that. Already up to 60%, Tracer can build this really quick. Rubidic blocks, this is easy stuff for Sinatra. Some skeet shooting, but he's forced to recall, gets harassed briefly by Architect. And on the other side, Corey here is on the Reaper. The States are trying to pincer South Korea, but Corey's forced to retreat back to the drum in the center of the map. He'll play from the high ground until that Death Blossom is available. Does he pop out and he go for it here? But he's knocked on the other side of the shield of Mano. The States are still able to get rid of Mano, though, when we can't pay out of the picture. It's looking very good for the USA. It has to be a sound barrier committed here by South Korea to even have a chance of staying in the fight. Sinatra trying to stay safe for now, waits for the barrier to subside. Now he'll be looking to clean up. Choi Hyobin tried to get an accretion off, but Corey had shut him down already. Only one DPS up for both teams right now. There will be a return for Carpe, but it's not going to be enough. Overtime dwindles. United States on the board first. You know, Carpe never able to use the Death Blossom there at the end, but Team USA takes Carpe out on the point playing the Reaper. And all you have is the supports and architects. No architect, he really doesn't have many options playing Doomfist, right? I mean, he has to rocket punch, connect with somebody. As soon as we were on board with Sinatra, he didn't connect with him. He goes flying off to the side. It leaves the supports alone on the point. So, not able to get anything happen. The Doomfist can be a little bit risky in scenarios like that. So, 
Let's see, moving to our next stage of Busan. What do we see either team do with their compositions? Busan is a map where you know the points they vary very, uh, very much. So you should see something different here as looks like Corey potentially going to be playing the Widow and then Sinatra on the Bastion. So specifically on this point, if you can get to the point and get like underneath the bridge, so to speak, you can lock in there with the Bastion. But the USA, very Don't difficult have a Lucio, break. Man. They can't really speed there, so instead oh. they take a central position and they've already managed to burn out Carpe. Troy Turbin's trying to push ahead of Super Shield to get the crease on the Bastion, but Sinatra, he's sitting pretty inside that immortality field. Hold is thrown out, but Sinatra had already pushed, positioned himself ahead of it. Sailing over the top goes Architect to his demise. Space is able to find the finish, and with Manu out of the way, the way is clear for the Snakes. Now they can set this Bastion up on the point. This is where they want to be, man. And this is a very difficult setup to break. You see Architect's going to go over to May. May very effective against Bastion. You can use the May wall, push in behind it. You can you know, boost the Bastion up, get him out of... Line of sight of that Baptiste immortality field, but they have to worry about Corey. Corey, one of the best Widowmakers in Overwatch League last year. And who answers him in this position? IDK did the last time. IDK got up there and started to challenge him, but then you lose the Lucio speed on the ground. Need him with the team most often. Space is hit with an accretion there, but he's still able to stand up. The Bastion's in the thick of things, but this is where Sinatra wants to be. He is frozen up, though. Coalescence is going to have to be used to keep it nice and healthy, but Sinatra braves the storm. And again. The U.S. repel South Korea, who are scrabbling for an answer to this unconventional strategy. And the issue here is the Widowmaker in play. Like, usually when you see this Bastion set up, maybe you combo it with, a, let's say, it's like a Faro or a, a Mei, but you know, with the Widowmaker, a great line of sights on this point for Widowmaker, and they have nobody to challenge it. And if IDK goes to challenge it, you have no speed to get on top of the Bastion. Very wide angle for Corey. Look I mean, he can just take shot after shot from here, Matt. IDK now pursues him. Dangerous business, a big four. Play a biotic grenade from Bidotion on the point, though. That really will help South Korea here. Amplification made through some moth. He tried to make the difference, but it was just the one kill. The investment for the United States of three ultimates. It pay off. But now you can probably switch off of this if you're Team USA. You got 70%. Now you will get to see Corey on the Reaper, Sinatra on the Doomfist, and then in terms of, like, the compositionally, you kind of like USA's now. So they get the percentage on the point. They force South Korea to make a switch to the May to be able to break that. Now they come in with an advantage comp wise of their own. Sinatra got hit with a biotic grenade as he landed, so he does need to stay safe for the time being. Mono supercharges down, and that is an interesting blizzard straight forward towards the United States, and many of them get caught. Nicely laid by Architect, and this will be clean up for South Korea. Yes, Team USA, they need to go in and force a fight. They had absolutely no ultimates on the board. Now South Korea, though, starting to gain a little bit of momentum here. So there is one player on the point. This is super. They are just keeping him alive forever. Interesting that he used his uh, Fortify earlier on. That only prolonged his life. Yeah, I mean, he, he was in a tough spot. I mean, he knew they were going to keep him up. Nah, it's a long way to get off the side of the map. So South Korea, they'll have that Gravitic Flux coming in the next fight. They have to have a good idea that Moth does not have Sound Barrier at this moment. So you'll be able to get a free Gravitic Flux off the start. Carpe is on the high ground, just teleported up there. He's ready to drop down and let go with the spinning top. Should it be required? Gravitic Flux here from Troy Govin. Here's the Death Blossom from Carpe. Not where he wants to be, though. He's pulled out of position, but Mock was still felled by the Flux itself. 6v5. Makes South Korea smell the blood in the water. They are barreling forward. Sinatra's now gone down. The longer this fight goes for South Korea, the better it off it is for them. US are going to struggle here to get back and have a proper fight. They spent ultimates, and they're going to have one more charm, so this one's going to round three. Yeah, and I would guess that Team USA thought that IDK had Sound Barrier there. They invested the Gravitic Flux of Space to probably try and force that out and give themselves a chance in terms of support ultimates towards the end, but getting very close to winning this point is South Korea and both support ults. It's go time. Carpe to the high ground. Doesn't have that Blossom anymore, but still can do work with a Hellfire shotgun. Corey has his Death Blossom, though. He might try and use it straight away, but Mano's taken down. He was frozen, though. Corey went for the Gambit, and he gets punished. Sinatra, Sinatra turns it around, though. A two kill with a seismic slam. But Dosha desperately tries to hold on with that Bionic Grasp. But South Korea, no, they've given up the point. They've got no other choice. Sinatra with four in the fight. He comes through, a rocket punch, 2k with the seismic slam after that. Now he puts him in a position to win it. Let's see what it looked like. Monstrous. Meteor strike to start it off, and then quick follow-up. The seismic slam, well placed. We're in one fight territory. Blizzard down for Architect here. Wall up to try and make sure the states are trapped inside of it. The curtain drops, and 
so does Super. Architect is traded out though. Corey was able to find that kill, but Carpe finds him after it's pin for tap. But Corey are up one player right now. Sinatra is able to find money late in the fight. Now the death loss from Carpe has found himself one. The barrier prevents him from any more, but space is looking worse for wear. But Dosen's coalescence came at just the right time. Carpe looks to try and finish off this fight. Super returns on the wrecking ball with that token effort and token resistance for the USA. They're just trying to buy some time to get the rest of them back in position. That's looking increasingly unlikely. And it'll be a third round here on Busan. Space tried to use the kinetic grass to stay alive. He was so close to a gravitic flux, but the coalescence obviously goes through the shields. Doesn't really care for the kinetic grass. He gets taken out there by Bidoshi. So map one will come down to one final point here is you know, Super, he stayed alive for a decent amount of time on the Wrecking Ball. He got Sinatra, he comes back with a Meteor Strike, he makes something happen out of that, but really losing the Sigma, that, that, that's kind of where things start to fall apart there for USA. Another map where we should expect to see Doomfist featuring quite heavily. Sinatra could play the Tracer, it's tough for Doomfist to deal with her, but th this is a good Doomfist point. Yeah, you'll see probably both uh, Reaper players come out with the Symmetra, teleport on forward, you can save the speed boost, gain a little bit more map control. Architect tries to punch, Sinatra is able to stay out of range for the most part. US taking a lot of damage early here though, and Sinatra has to be careful. Just better trading in general from South Korea. Corey was pushed deep to try and make the play. Oh man, South Korea, the cleanup crew coming in is, as soon as they lose Super at the front line for Team USA, that's kind of the go single for South Korea as they push right on through the front line. Now for South Korea, you probably play up close at this choke. It looks like that's where everybody's going to sit up here. Where does Team USA go? It looks like they try and fake a play under and then they're going to speed boost through. And they do, they get caught in the hold though, so this coalescence is extra important for Rockets, but it's interrupted! A creation in a rocket punch, Architect drops down and Super blasts off again. That'll be another one fight for South Korea. Back to the drawing board once more for the USA. They'll go back and play this choke yet again. For Team USA, they, they, I mean, it's a play we see a lot of teams try and do. They went to the right, they hold speed boost, then they come right back up the middle. But nice accretion from Shoyoba to break up. Kampe pushed forward, oh, to catch Super before they got out the door. This is going from bad to worse yeah. in the United States, man. Down oh, for South Korea, they're doubling down here. Interesting. With a player advantage, they still seek to make sure uh, no mistakes are made. As much as it's a uh, statement game for USA to try and get a win here, it's one the other way around for South Korea. You heard you saw Bidoshi on the stage right before. He looked like he was chanting USA. He knew that like yeah, because everyone he, was going to be against troll. them. Yeah, he's, he's a, a troll, troll. But they want to they want to make a statement. They're going in the spawn, trying to get the spawn camp going. Carpe, not quite the bell hop that the United States were hoping for, but he gets sent back anyway. Architects able to find Mob Corey caught in the gravitic flux. And Choi Hyoven fights two massive kills, follows up with a third, and the United States still haven't gotten out of spawn. I mean, this final point has not been close. It has been all South Korea here. As Team USA, you just have this Gravitic Flux to use, but if they take so much damage coming in, there's such a risk of just getting eliminated. It's very difficult to get it off. Going for the Gravitic Flux, though. Sinatra's already fallen down early. Mop was stunned up, but at least get a trade. A lot of healing for South Korea is missing. The States try and push forward. It's a 4v4, but Raucus is now down. US has to rely on Mock here and desperately Space is just trying to get the point. Carpe wisely keeps his distance from the Sigma. He's so deadly with that accretion. Then lets Architect come in and take the glory and the kill. And that'll be enough. South Korea open up this series with a map win. Already well ahead of their previous performance against the United States and on a good track to make another grand final appearance. Carpe was strong on the Reaper. All map long, 42 limbs, 19 final blows, and seven deaths. Gonna need to see USA bounce back in a big way in map number two. The 2019 Overwatch World Cup is brought to you by T-Mobile. Their newest signal goes farther than ever, and it's built 5G ready. Omen, the official PC and display of the Overwatch World Cup. And by Coca-Cola, 
the official refreshment of the Overwatch World Cup. Last two years, I uh, represent France. It's a huge honor for us. Là où personne nous voit. When a spot was recognized in the US. Or so Josh, you going for our Drive Safe and Safe discount? Yep, using the app, Drive and Safe. You wanna go, bro? Do not mess with my discount. <sighs> Get a discount up to 30% with Drive Safe and Save. The future waits for no one. So we refuse to wait for it. We're not just pilots and engineers. We are pioneers. Today, battles are waged in nanoseconds. And planes are piloted from the other side of the world. We turn night into day and fly missions in space. The future's not coming. It's already here. This is the future. Join us and be the future. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of BlizzCon. Facebook Gaming, a world of play. Corsair, do your thing. And by NVIDIA. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2019 Overwatch World Cup. This first semi-final starts off with a bank, but perhaps not the way. The local fans expected it to, after struggling in their group stage earlier on, South Korea went 2-2. Two and two. They open up this series with a first map win, Matt, and they look a little bit more disciplined I mean, it's, today. It's just like flashbacks of years past, though, right? Now, you know, the first, like, day or two, all everybody's talking about is, oh, like, South Korea may not win, they're vulnerable, and then, like, as soon as we get to the final day, they really, like, kick it into another gear. We have short memories around here, yes. apparently. Uh, map 1 was very close, though. Uh, comes down to the wire, really. Uh, it, you know, that first well, not the third got, round. Yeah, the third round was really a bit of a blowout in favor of South Korea. But it'll be interesting to see what happens as we go further into the series. We do have a substitution uh, for South Korea when we uh, get over to their roster. And map number two will be Hollywood. So uh, maybe we see uh, some Farah play, some Hanzo play here from some of the, uh, from either team, really. I mean, we've seen a ton of Farah Hanzo throughout the weekend. The Tracer from Sinatra worked very well against Architects Doomfist on that first round. Very hard for Architects to do anything about him at all. Substitution here for South Korea, I believe. You're familiar with those glasses? Haxile comes in for Carpe. So, I mean, uh, Haxile can play uh, the Doomfist, he can play Farah, he can play Mei. Uh, a lot of heroes you would like to have here on Regarded Hollywood. as one of the best in the world on all of those heroes. Uh, absolutely. And then I, he can always can leave Architect in. He can just pick up the work on any other hero. I mean, that's why Architect was such a vital part to the San Francisco Shock, and then also this team, and you can kind of build around him the damage dealer role, he can play everything. Multiple Overwatch League champions across both of these two teams. Now, second map, of course, being Hollywood. Yes, might open up a couple of opportunities to see the Bastion playing from Architect, should it be required. Axel bringing in something like the Farah. Do you think, uh, very quick before we jump in here, do you, do you feel like the, uh, the USA learned an important lesson uh, after Busan? 
Or do you think they're even shocked at all about that result? I mean, no. I mean, uh, what kind of lesson would they have learned? I, I think they knew that this team would be tough. I think they come in. You know, they've been here for a little bit now. Uh, I believe they got here at like 9 a.m. So just kind of like warming up, sitting around. But you know, it, it is a bit of uh, time before you get into the actual game. South Korea did have a match this morning, uh, mind you. So Hollywood will be the next map up in the set. So it, it could take a little bit for USA to warm up. Although, they did take that first point on Busan. It, it didn't look bad there, right? We would be having this discussion <laughs> if they ended up winning Busan at the end. It's just with the way it ended, you know, with South Korea really dominating there. It's like it's like South Korea tried to fly under the radar, but that is just not possible for them to do at a World Cup. Yeah, I mean, you can't... How, how do you fly under the radar when you have Haxal, Architect, Mano, Choyobin, Carpe on the roster? Not easily. Give you the big one. So Cor uh, Corey might be uh, here on the Hanzo, recovering from his 1v1 uh, real-life Hanzo battle against Brennan Hook. That was the last time uh, no, we see Corey on the Hanzo. <laughs> we, we definitely have since. So Natra will be on the Bastion here. So South Korea, the onus is on them to try and break this setup and see if they can force a rotation from Sinatra. And uh, the, you almost actually saw Kill go down there. So they tried to use the Symmetra teleporter, and then an accretion came down. <laughs> And now uh, we see the few teams actually get caught out with that so far in the World Cup. So, Korea, this is the composition we've seen a lot of teams go to throughout the weekend. It is Farah Hanzo with a Zenyatta to really put a lot of shield pressure down. If you can land a Discord down between the damage of the Hanzo, the Zen, and the Farah, that target is relatively dead quickly. Discord, the Bastion, while is rotating and is not behind a shield, and then that Farah damage over the top of those shields becomes much more lethal. Raucus has gone down already though, and that is not a pick off you can afford at this present juncture. Over the top is Huxal, trying to make himself hard to hit, but Sinatra goes a little better. Dragon Strike to the point now, and USA won't have much time to respond to that one. Corey's able to find Mano. Huxal's brought back into the fight, super struggling. Sinatra's still alive under the immortality field, but they go for the Amp Matrix anyway, and it works out. IDK on the high ground, he's just sheepishly absconded as the rest of his team turn to ashes. USA needed to go pretty heavy in that fight to be able to win it though and I like there is Sinatra as soon as the Dragon Strike comes down from Corey, He jumps down to the low ground and gets inside of the Dragon Strike while he's sit up in the turret and South Korea they want to push the Bastion They feel like they have a vulnerable right but they can't because of the Dragon Strike coming on in It's just a lot of extra damage. They're not able to live through Again, Huxal pushes very close to the cafe trying to stay mostly out of line of sight But Corey already has an off angle on him these two will have to duel a little bit over the next couple of moments. The winner may decide the outcome of this fight. Here comes a barrage over the top, but it doesn't work. Mock on the immortality field down. Another dragon strike from Corey. It's been one per fight for this guy. It does split South Korea slightly, but not enough to allow the USA to capitalize yet. But IDK's down. It's traded. Super's missing. USA missing a lot of their shielding right now, and they've lost Corey. But Trick Owen is the only tank standing for South Korea. He can still do work from this position, though, with space out of the picture. That one shield makes a big difference. Moth inside the immortality field. That's going to get cleaned up. But Raucus gets the finish on Haxar with a sleep dart. Now over the top, he has to work with Sinatra to keep the dream alive. But Mano runs him down. Well, Sinatra still here on Tracer, just trying to contest this for a little bit. You're going to have Super coming back in. But he's that's on really it for Team USA. Nice body block there. Mano is so over. clever. He comes in and knocks Super out of the way as he was trying to get to the point and help Sinatra out. That gave South Korea a couple seconds of window to get rid of the Tracer and capture the point. And Haxel comes back on Doom this year. Tried to actually go with IDK and get really aggressive on some players spawning forward, but kind of backfired here for South Korea. An absurd amount of damage. Corey has 42% of his team's damage on this Hanzo thus far. And he'll now take to the upper building, those hypersphere's chasing him wherever he goes though, he will need healing momentarily he's a gravitic flux and a two player by the grenade is definitely going to help things out <laughs> Sinatra, that's a nasty punch in midair, and the front line of the USA blows South Korea down yeah, it's a nice gravitic flux but it's also a great halt there from Super to set it up, the biotic grenade comes in and they're not able to live through that combo, but Moth now has to go back to the spawn to get super, you need this Arisa back in the fight. South Korea knows that they can go take some real estate here on the point. As th that's going to force Space to back out. Space is up here trying to pretend like he was going to play, but they had a great idea that super's out of the equation. Now they get to pick up on a Corey early. This is dangerous for the USA. They could be giving up a lot more ground than just this by trying to fight with an undermanned squad. Kodosan comes in with a coalescence and everyone on the USA are lined up. 
Raucus is having a fine IDK here, and Bedosin can't do any other real healing while he's coalescing. South Korea slow the pace down a little bit more. There are five players on site for the USA and only four for South Korea. Still they push, still they're looking for something. Architect gets into the back line and he found Raucus. That's not ideal for the US. Yeah, McQuarrie and Sinatra answer back, but two picks up their own. You have another Gravitic Flux here for space. IDK is in trouble. Sinatra found two. He's looking to follow up on the Flux and Trehoven is in deep, deep trouble. Sinatra unleashed late in the fight. And the defense now has a chance to solidify it. And now you should be able to keep Brockus alive a little bit easier. He goes over to Moira. Moira has much better personal survivability than Ana. So, saw Space trying to turn around with the Kinetic Grass. Not able to keep him alive on the Ana. Now on Moira, it should be much easier. You won't have to worry as much when you have the Reaper teleport into the back line. Bokoven trying to peel, help his teammate with Sinatra scrutiny coming down. Ice block had to be used there by Huxtel and he's going to go for the Blizzard now. Sinatra's caught inside that one, somehow able to get out but still chased down. And that was rough. A big kill involvement there for Huxtel on that Blizzard. You can get another fight though here if your Team USA is Rockus just extending this a little bit longer. He builds up some Coalescence ult charge there and prevents the payload from moving on forward. You just have to worry about getting split off here potentially by a Hacksaw Maywall, but you can come back and you're going to get closer to Supercharger Coalescence and a Death Blossom potentially fight this. Super will be a little bit late on getting that one and caught out. Fortified, trying to buy some time. Is it enough? He's using his shield to try and stay alive. His teammates are on the way and the cavalry is here. Super is kept alive. Now the USA are pushing forward the Supercharger. Death Blossom, that's Corey trying to make the ends meet, but Architect's going to try some of his own. What? Unbelievable interruption from Sinatra. The Rocket Punch cancels the Death Blossom from Architect. And now South Korea going to do this the old-fashioned way. Wall goes up again, catching Super out, but Sinatra does work on Manu. He's down. Meteor Strike gets the kill, but Osa was too low and didn't have the chance to fade away. Sinatra is here again. This guy is a maniac. They're just trying to keep Architect alive. Control yourself. A little bit of the tactical crops there towards the end, but little final, bit. Final fight here for South Korea. They are in a good spot in terms of ultimates. They'll end up with another Blizzard and a Death Blossom here. Team USA yet again, those spaces building these Gravitic Flux is so fast. They'll have both support ults and a Gravitic Flux. Coalescence comes out first here. Oh, IDK just Beautiful. got blown to smithereens. Sinatra has time to select his next target, but he runs into a fortified Orisa first. It doesn't matter. He's body blocking. He's punching. He's rope doping. Whatever it takes, Sinatra's got what you need. Great shot calling there from Team USA. They recognize the advantage they have in terms of support ultimates. They get really aggressive with the Coalescence. They're able to get a halt from Super and pick off one right away. And, uh, you know, South Korea, they really have a great chance to be able to move the cart after that. They can make it back to the payload. They put up a little bit of a fight, but nothing too serious there. So Team USA knows the goalpost they need to get to right before basically they have to take you know they have to unlock the payload and then basically get the second checkpoint to win the match. Rourke is there uh, gesturing down the line at Corey. Just having a little bit of a discussion. Congratulations I think for one another. I'm telling you the Corey Sinatra combo is really starting to gel here. As soon as the ultimate started getting rolling. I, I mean the, the blizzard from uh, Haxal looked like it would be dangerous. Yes. Was a fight win. But you were right, Matt, when you said there was one more fight, another chance. And the fact that Super, after getting walled off from the rest of his team right here on the map, was able to stay alive with well, fortifying his barrier until his teammates came. What a fight turn. And, and it doesn't seem like a big moment in the game, but like when Raucus uh, switches over to Moira and then the fight that they lose with the Blizzard, he's able to stay on the cart for a little bit, dance around, build some ult charge. But that's the difference in like 10-15% in terms of like uh, your Coalescence. And they needed that Coalescence to come out of the spawn door when Super gets walled off and use the Coalescence to heal him up. So if he doesn't stay on the cart, the cart probably is advancing faster. He doesn't have that charge. You may not have that Coalescence in that type of scenario to keep him up. So Team USA now goes on the attack. Uh, we'll see if they stay on this. Uh, if you, When you see Sinatra on the Reaper and Corey on the Hanzo, uh, you know they're either going to have to switch up like the whole comp, yeah. So they're they're going to make a change here. So Sinatra goes over to the Doomfist, and they'll have Corey play the Rapier here, and you do that because you see the Hacksaw playing the May. You like this composition against May. Rocket Punch. Oh, Trukovic's majorly out of position. Kinetic Grass keeps him alive for long enough for Hacksaw to find a kill, and somehow he's still standing. Fantastic pick.
steal from South Korea, but Sinatra's not done yet. Huge rising up a cup, but he is caught on an island with both of the enemy DPS players. I, I mean, they get Shoyobin in a horrible position, but Mano and Hacksaw come in to save the day. It's Mano, the you see him fortify in, eating some shots after the kinetic grab. Hacksaw also picks off one of Wall to get some players up. Hacksaw's already in a blizzard here uh, after the first fight. Seven final blows for Axel so far. Sinatra will need a little bit of a top up before he tries to go over once more. And the USA only really have the Cold Lessons to work with. South Korea got a lot more done. Double Cold Lessons, Blizzard. Were the USA ready for this one? I think not. No. Nothing they can do there, really. They walk right into the choke here on Hollywood, one of the more devastating chokes we have, right? There's no real opportunity to attack in any other way. A small choke into a, an L-bend immediately. And I mean, you're walking through into like a, a Maywall, the Blizzard, the Coalescence, there's not really enough time for them to speed get around the corner. Architect, what are you building back here? Looking to try and get rid of Super, but he was healed up and fortified for the most part. Oh, Architect is knocked out of the way. Another death loss and that kind of fizzles, really. But the USA are down in players with no Corey, no Raucus. Not much else to work with. South Korea does end up investing a sound barrier into that. So Team USA, they're playing for their own sound barrier of their own for Cheyobin's Gravitic Flux. They're going to play for their own Flux and the Supercharger with some extra damage to follow it up. So. See if they're able to get that type of action. You can also use your own Coalescence and Raucus gets it to force out Bedotians and then give yourself a real good advantage where they have no support ultimate Hold going into your Flux. Gravitic Flux, had to be a sound barrier yep. for Pleasant Trees exchange, but now the real brawling begins. Corey has a death blossom and he gets Manu who is just slightly out of position. This one looks good, it looks great! Three kills for Corey, two from the Blossom. And that is not the bouquet that South Korea wanted delivered. And they got the exact action I was talking about, and even better because they didn't have to use their Gravitic Flux. They're able to push straight on through, get an early pickoff. So now knowing that South Korea does not have the sound barrier, you have good knowledge of that if you're Team USA. If they try and play close around the Blizzard, can you just Gravitic Flux this to save your team? There's the Blizzard. Corey's doing so much here though. He's able to flank around, a whole kept IDK out. The rest of his team's struggling, but he's able to get the two for two trade. Make it three, Corey! <laughs> I'd say he was in the house, but there isn't one tough enough to keep him inside. Architect down now as well, and the USA back to business. And that was one where Hacksaw gets the Blizzard in a really close quarter area. You think it's going to be very difficult. Space still had no uh, no ability to use a Gravitic Flux. He gets taken out really quickly by the Blizzard. But still the damage dealers for Team USA bringing it. Sinatra able to pick off a few, and then Corey finishes off. Hacksaw now goes over to the Doomfist. Whoa, Geronimo, Sinatra drops in. Meteor strike, perfect. Hacksaw is down, great force forced by Architect, and again, he's not really in position to get more than just Super. Sinatra wasn't able to knock him up, but it's fine. The accretion forces him out of the fight, but it's the USA. They can sense weakness. And, and now you have a lot of time. I mean, Team USA has an infinite amount of time here to work with in terms of Overwatch, right? Gonna get this payload around the corner. This will probably be like one fight territory for South Korea. They'll have both support ultimates. Team USA has to have a good idea. They know that those are on the table. They haven't seen them in a while. This will be the flux here from space. So that'll get the sound barrier out. Death Blossom when they drop down as an option. It's gonna be dueling cold essence. It's here. Goes Corey once more. Barrels through Mano. Knocks down the door. And South Korea have no choice but to let them over the threshold. Hollywood goes the way of the stars and the stripes. I really thought you saw Corey have a standout performance there on Hollywood. He plays with the Hanzo at the beginning, but his Reaper play so strong throughout that match. I think it's uh, really great that everybody gets to see a uh, Corey uh, with some uh, good team around him, right? He struggled on the justice a little bit early on. Bounce back here for Team USA as they tie the series up at one map apiece. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by T-Mobile. Their newest signal goes farther than ever. 
and it's built 5G ready. Intel, the official CPU partner of BlizzCon. Cisco, the official networking partner of BlizzCon. And by HyperX, we're all gamers. BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of BlizzCon. Facebook Gaming, a world of play. Corsair, do your thing. And by NVIDIA. Overall, I'd probably say Prophet, just his like overall ability and like as like a support player, I think Moth is really insane. Like I think he's really, 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 really good. He's been like consistent throughout the Overwatch League. He almost plays perfect every single time he goes on stage. The best player in Overwatch World Cup right now, I'd probably say Shoyobin. Amazing at Diva when he plays GOATS. Yeah, Shoyobin is probably the best player overall in the game. I think he's Insane, and his grind and mechanics are insane. He's the best off tank, he's the best in my position in the world. I, I just know that Choi is a selfless player and he'll do what he can to help the team. He's nuts at every flex saying. I think Choi Hoban is probably the best player in the world. And I would also like to play against Space, because I think that he's a very talented player and probably the best Western player on the uh, off tank position. He's a really good off tank. The best player at the World Cup right now is the T-Mobile MVP, Sinatra. His performance over the last year in the finals of the Overwatch League just shows like such a spectacular performance. He's gotten MVP in the Overwatch League, and I think he could be the best player here. I think I have to go with Sinatra as well. He can play almost every character. He is dominating, I've seen him play, and it's incredible how he plays. In this year's Overwatch World Cup, the Doomfist is going to be pretty important in like the meta and stuff. I think Sinatra's got a pretty solid Doomfist, so that's the biggest threat. Best player, I would do Jay Jonak from South Korea because he's one of the best flex sports I ever saw. I'd say in the World Cup this year is Corey. Uh, he's just un unbelievable when we practice against him. He just like randomly somehow 3v1s us and we're like, what, what just happened? I would say a highlight player, Masa. Masa as a support player, just because he's uh, very consistent. He has a very good play style. He's very communicative and he's always there when you need help. So you can trust the guy. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Must be nice to know that the players' opinions on who is the best is just as varied and wild as your own.
So Kyoven on Sinatra, of course, a lot of those, uh, a lot of mentions for these two yeah. players outside the blatant finish bias at the end of that video. <laughs> but it's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard to disagree. You know, these two players are absolutely candidates. Yeah, Very bad. and I thought one of the more interesting uh, takes was actually uh, Barney. Uh, obviously, uh, I think that uh, USA and Canada probably scrimmed each other a uh, decent amount. And uh, Corey, a fantastic hit scan player on like the Widow and the, he plays uh, things like the Hanzo and then the Reaper. And I think this type of environment you're getting to see can he play up to the level of the likes of like the Hacksaws and the Carpes and Architects and he definitely can hang. And I think you can start to see him be one of those players that really kind of take another step in their Overwatch career here at the Overwatch World Cup. Corey competed uh, in an Overwatch contenders the path to pro. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if he was still an incredibly impactful player, but I don't think people realize because he was doing this crazy stuff against an opposition that was not Overwatch League level. Then he turns around <laughs> and he does it to Overwatch League level opposition. And then you start to realize after he got out of Zarya prison that he was absolutely a front runner, one of the best DPS players in the world. And he is that nestled right inside this USA roster. He was ready to play. I mean, he was so amped up for this game. Gibraltar, the next map up, but uh, you know, we were in the back. I was watching uh, the last game with Team USA, and you can tell like Corey was like itching but to go out. He on wasn't stage nervous. And play. He no. was jealous yeah, of those that jealous. were out yeah, on, yeah. The, on the uh, on the stage. Well, he, that means a lot. He could hear the crowd. He knew how hyped everyone was going to be for Team USA coming into this match, and he definitely wanted to come in and put on a show. Blows have been exchanged already in this series, and map three represents a chance for either South Korea or USA to get a nose out in front. This is a first of three series, and naturally, this map is absolutely pivotal. Watch point Gibraltar. Plenty of opportunity for Bastion play. We've seen fire before. Long range play from snipers is also an option, but one thing's for sure you're going to see a heck of a lot of Sigma. Yeah. South Korea is going to go. As soon as they see this Bastion on the cart, they are going to get aggressive and try and push this. There's the main wall out from Corey to the high ground. There they, they go. Come. And they're going to push Sinatra now, just trying to find out who he needs to be shooting first. Tries to stop to repair himself. Immortality Field is active, and now he's ready to go again. Desperately, Huxtel trying to keep him frozen. Three players for the USA are frozen stiff right now, but South Korea still looking for those kills. Great wall off on Corey by Haxal, making a half for him to have an impact here. But Sinatra is still alive until now. The curse strikes again, but it's a, it's a messy trade. The USA winning this one out. Space with two, the coalescence coming in from Rock is there to turn the tides. Now Team USA, it's a huge fight win, Mitch, because if you lose that, you have to consider switching off of this. Then South Korea has the ultimate advantage. They win the fight there. And now they can get the Bastion set up yet again on the payload. And that's the most important part. It may seem obvious to some, but Bastion can't walk or move while he's in that configuration. Being on the cart allows him to move across the battlefield and continue to threaten. Here's a supercharger. They got a break line aside from this. I mean, South Korea, Mano tried to get away, but he got caught out. And Haxel! Corey sends him bye-bye with an endothermic blast through the long range. Sinatra is finally brought down. The wall is brought up by the USA, but it's not enough to protect them from the wrath of South Korea. They had to use a lot to win the fight, though. Coalescence, Blizzard, Death Blossom, Team USA. If you want to stay on this Bastion, you probably get to the high ground, make a play. But Ocean may be going to Ana here to try and make a play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go, go, go over to Ana. You don't have the Coalescence, a big Biotic Grenade, a Sleep Dart here. Could How do you be in the set cards. up this Bastion, Matt, in a way that allows you to progress and well, get back to the car? Well, South Korea is smart. They're taking the high ground here. They want to deny this access from Team USA. You want to force this Bastion. Bastion is the most vulnerable when he's on the move. So you want to force him... Hi-ho, hi-ho. Yeah, to, to be in sentry mode, <laughs> not turret mode, right? So, see, they can't target that going onto the high ground here. So they're going to try and take some of this high ground. That's what Team USA wants to do here. They're not really worried about the car. Sinatra just leaps forward and tries to set up. Onto the card he goes. Okay, not really where he wanted to land. He needs to actually reposition a little bit, so he goes for tank configuration instead. Gonna pack plenty of a punch here. Still make use of this immortality of amplification matrix. Gravitic flux. They're brought down. Plenty of health for the USA still. They're not worried, and Corey is able to zone out with that blizzard in the bottom left corner. South Korea are forced to split, but Dosen playing on his own on the high ground. He douses them, though, in a biotic grenade, but it's not nearly enough to stop. United States. And I like that blizzard from Corey. A lot of times, uh, you see Architect here, he gets the forward spawn, just trying to go out, get a little bit of uh, stall progress there for uh, South Korea, not letting USA move the cart. But when the Gravitic Flux comes in from Trioban, Team USA, they do not play a Lucio in this type of composition. So you don't have a, a sound barrier. 
So what they decide to do is they just throw the Blizzard down where the Flux is, so South Korea can't move on forward in to try and pick up any of the kills off of it. Like mid-wind of Minnesota, Mana was forced to stay inside the low left room and he couldn't help capitalize on the Flux nice. at all! Oh, 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 oh. Well, that one is going to hurt in the morning. They're going to push, try and push through this barrier here that Trujovic put up, but there's another one from Manu. Sinatra does not care. He's going to whittle it down brick by brick. Bring the defenses of South Korea to the ground. Yeah, and we have not uh, had an opportunity uh, up until this weekend to see Space get to play the Sigma. They're going to actually use a Nano Boost here. It looks like the fight is over, but they're going to Nano Boost Haxel here. Try and probably just farm up this Blizzard, but... The space has been great on the Sigma all weekend long. Kant will eventually push through this barrier, but he's able to get rid of the Supercharger. Here comes the Gravitic Flux. Space takes to the sky. Oh, it's time to sleep! But Ocean delivers the sand. Sinatra's inside the Immortality Field, but that will be removed right about now. And now he's super vulnerable. Great wall from Corey protecting most of the USA. But eventually South Korea is still able to push up. They're investing really heavily, though, in their ultimates. Only K Sound Barrier, he threw it in there. But it may still not be flux. enough. Gravitic Flux has to go here. Corey throws a defensive blizzard down, and that one, that oh. one probably didn't stick. Well, you're probably going to see him switch. You're going to see him switch over to the Reaper. So that's probably why you see the blizzard there towards the end. Just try and force another ultimate or two out of South Korea. Is there it is? Yep. Corey going to go over to Reaper here. So now you have the mirror matchup pretty much outside of Bedoshin playing this Ana, which we've seen him play a lot the whole weekend. High ground established for South Korea. So now it's up to the USA to force them down. And they can do that by trying to move up the car, but they need to be able to do that without taking heavy casualties. Architect, well, speaking of which, tries to go in, gets rid of Sinatra at the very least here in the USA, are split, and they are pinched on multiple sides. Not a great position for them to be in, but South Korea saw their opportunity, they've taken it, and that'll be that. And I wonder if we see Bidoshin switch now. Now that you use the Nano Boost, you get a fight win with the Nano Blossom. Do you see them just escort Bidoshin back to the spawn? And that's exactly what's happening. Argentina gets that pick off. IDK and Bidoshin going back to the spawn. Bidoshin now will go Moira. So you just wanted to get a use of that Nano Boost. You get a fight win out of it. Now you go back to Moira. And you got Raucus to use Coalescence. So you know you're going to be about even in terms of ultimate percentage on those heroes. One minute remains now for the United States to get this payload just a little further. Need to get under this space shuttle first and need to keep six players up. Supercharger from Super and Trukhoven's already gone down here. That's the start they were looking for. Architect of and also Crubble and the domino effect in full display now. South Korea wisely don't invest any further to stay in the fight, but the USA gets the time extension. And they push on forward. They know that there are a few members here that have spawned up, so Choi will jump off the side. I have him spawn with the rest of the team. So how does USA play this? Because Mono will have the supercharger, right? You can come around the corner if you're South Korea, drop the supercharger, hide it. Not a lot of area for Team USA to hide. That's why they're probably playing a little bit further up. They want to get the supercharger out early and then back around the corner, dwindle it off. Zatra goes in early into the back line. Meteor strike now to bring down the hole with their trick over. He's incredibly low. Great sound barrier time from IDK. He just saves his off tank and that allows Trick over to go for the flux right now. Time to bring the house down, but also up South Korea go, and that is oh. filthy! Architect just waited for USA to get dropped. Four. Oh. Gave them a warm, warm reception. In South Korea, they used their sound barrier rather early there. So you were like, ah, oh, maybe Space is going to be able to make a play with his Gravitic Flux. But let's take a look at Architect here. He so knows. the Gravitic Flux he goes he up from Choi. He goes right into it. A halt as well from Mono. Hello, USA. Brings it all together. Would you be interested in sitting on a cactus today? No? Bad luck. Axel and IDK are down early, early in this fight, though it's a good sign for the USA. Mano missing the chase now. Trichoven won't be able to get away. And still, the end of the map is in sight for the United States. The card is round of the final bend, and we are into the final stretch. Raucus has coalescence, Trigoven will have another I was gonna say, flux. He, he builds that in one fight, that is massive. The coalescence here from Raucus, just putting pressure on them as they come out the door. They've gotten rid of IDK, the Lucio out of the picture now, and Architect, the bulk of the damage has gone by the wayside as well. Coalescence has to be used here, the Gravitic Flux is a big hit.
but they bring Sinatra down to the high ground. He'll drop in, seismic slam, uppercut is there, hit by an accretion in midair, but in the meantime, Corey is doing all the work. He's gone under the radar himself, and he's done all the groundwork. The way is paved now for USA to finish, but Architect stalls out, great immortality field thrown in there. Space quickly gets rid of it, Huxel doesn't last very long. Thrown out once more, IDK, that was such a clever little trick, we'll talk about that in a second. But over the line goes the USA. IDK switches off and yeah. back to Batiste to get another immortality field. That is some cheeky tech, yeah. but it's not enough. That Team USA, they do get it over the line, but no time left in the bank. So you do expect that type of uh, finish when they have to play, well, they don't have to, but when they play the Bastion composition for so long, and then they have to switch off of it, and then uh, South Korea can pretty much keep playing what they were playing at that moment in time. So. You kind of you lose a chunk of time there for Team USA once the Bastion gets stopped. Like, if, if you were, usually what we see is, like, when you have the Bastion, you're rolling, you're able to complete the map like that, like, really quickly. But once you have to switch off of that, like, you had to have, like, Rockus change, Corey change, Sinatra change, like, you're changing a lot of different parts of the team there. So then that's when you see teams, that they burn some clock, but you, you burn the clock because you've earned a lot of payload partners at that point. I mean, the Bastion pretty much got them almost to the end of the second checkpoint. But so then it's work. South Korea have a couple of ultimates which feed into more ultimates, and they kept starting the fight right. on the USA when they were in the small corridor on the top left corner. So. And, and then South Korea also knows because the switches come through, they can invest very little in the fights and win them. So that's why you see like fight wins where it's just the nano boost onto the Reaper teleporting in. They're able to use like whether it just be a supercharger, just be a flux, and then you start building up real war chest of ultimates. So Team USA on defense here, they'll play the Bastion again. Corey will play the Hanzo here. So we're gonna have Bastion Hanzo with an Ana Baptiste set up here for Team USA. They're probably gonna go out and try and play on the cart potentially, or they sit on the high ground. Interesting setup. We don't see a lot of teams play this. How much of this have South Korea seen? Well, now they know. Sonic Arrow fired by Architect. Axel, a great opportunity for Cussive Blast here. He had a window before the shield was put up. Now it's a little harder for him. He's able to dodge the hold and the accretion. Everything but the kitchen sink being flung in his general direction. That immortality field is down, and this is not who you want to run into an alley at night. Axel not able to finish the kill. He didn't want to overcommit, but now with Super going down, he probably feels a bit more confident going forward. Sinatra blown up. Troy Govin opening this fight right up. Yeah, and Moth is able to miraculously keep Sinatra up at the beginning of that when Hacksaw's putting pressure on him on the far up. But the real casualty there is because you're dedicating so many resources to keep Sinatra up, you lose super. So even when Sinatra goes to get set up, he's not able to do so. You see Corey just on the cart, dancing around. Corey may switch off of this and go Reaper. If he, he goes Reaper, what you'll see Team USA do is he'll just speed boost right into the front line try and take out Mono and Choi. So that's exactly what's gonna happen. So USA, they'll have Corey go Reaper. You're gonna see the speed boost from Moth. You're gonna get really aggressive, try and take out the tank line. This Pyro pick map could be a huge difference maker for South Korea in general on this map. If Huxel's able to do things like that, Super disintegrates. So do the chances of the USA having a reasonable fight here. They've only got half of their team alive before they even get started. Not ideal for the home team. Farah Hanzo is just so much damage. So what Team USA wants to do with their comp, or well, what they were trying to do when they were playing the Reaper, is get aggressive, push right on through. What South Korea is trying to do is just spam with the Hanzo, the Farah, the Zinyata. It's just a lot of damage and just you know, chunk these players down as they come in and hope you've done enough damage to get an early pickoff or two. And they've gotten super both times. This is dangerous for USA. Look at these ultimates for South Korea. They have not been pressured to use any of them. And because Corey and Sinatra have had to switch so much, you don't have anything. Corey finds a first pick there on Fidosin. The trade comes out, so does the Dragon Strike. Mano getting rid of Super now makes it tough. Corey's gonna try and double back to the card. He tried to interrupt the Resurrect, but great hold from Mano. Keeps Corey off of his mercy, and IDK brings the Zenyatta back. This is going very smoothly for South Korea. And South Korea's gonna make changes. You don't need the far now, they're gonna play the Widow. You're gonna supercharge her, as it looks like you have one player still alive here. Space just trying to use the Kinetic Grass to stay up. I, do, I think Huxel's gonna go looking for him. Corey's gonna try and help him out, supercharges down. Kinetic Flux. Moth is removed there by Huxel very early on, and he dominates the high ground. South Korea starting to lead, starting to lean into the individual skill of some of these players. Haxal, especially after switching over. The Doomfist and Farah, both effective in equal measure. And that's another checkpoint. Look at this time bank match. And so many changes that have to come in from Team USA. 
Moth, Corey, go off the edge. So, I mean, tell Korea they really haven't had to change much. I mean, Bidoshin's been able to play Zen most of this round. Architect on the Hanzo, they really only had to change. Hacksaw, now they make wholesale changes here. They come towards the end. So you're going to have the Doomfist Reaper, the, the, the standard in terms of damage dealers right now. This is going to take something special for the USA to hold off Korea at this stage. So not just in the back line, no particular target, just trying to get some heads turned in his direction, and it works. Great walk back to his team, now to the high ground. Slowly building the Death Blossom. Tries to drop down there, but he's booped off course. He's able to get into the back line now, with Tricobin going down. Rock has sent the Biotic Orb in, and Sinatra is ready to rock and roll. Haxal attempted to get rid of him, but Corey finds so many picks. Yeah. And Corey with the re on the Hanzo. I mean, we've seen him do some absolutely crazy things on Hanzo in the Overwatch League. So all it takes is to catch a little bit of fire here and Team USA can put together a hold. Four minutes over South Korea is a lot. Is Team USA, you'll have the Death Blossom here. Where can you position Sinatra? Can you kind of combo the Gravitic Blocks plus the Death Blossom just like South Korea did? Axel, very aggressive. Tip of the spear drives in. Sinatra's Death Blossom time. Great boop away from IDK, but he still catches Haxile. Two for one trade early in the fight, but Architect got caught in a masterful halt by Super. Now both DPS is down. USA have to play so perfectly for the next three and a half minutes to take this map. And I think if you're South Korea, right now is probably where you would consider changing anything if you wanted to, because Bidoshin, not close to the Coalescence, Hacksaw, not even close to the Meteor Strike, but they're gonna stay on this. They're gonna try and force this action through here, but Nakori does have an advantage. CIDK going up to the high ground, maybe trying to challenge this Hanzo. Built the angle yep. on the Dragon Strike there. Kori stays safe for the most part until Architect's able to run him down. But remember on Busan though, that was South Korea's strategy when Corey was playing the Widowmaker. They kept sending IDK up to the high ground to go and deal with him. And then they were, they got, I mean, they, they was not close. I mean, they were not able to deal with they his Widow. Get anything from IDK then, no speed race, right. no heal. But, but now on defense here for Team USA, you have all the high ground, right? Just with the way the map is, I mean, they spawn really close to it. Gonna be able to hold on to it. Supercharger here for USA. Off there. Boost speed, but he's not committing himself. Still trying to stay in the back line a little more. Not quite the aggressor as IDK is waiting for us to take the company. Trying to boot him away immediately. Sound barriers come out from both teams, but Super comes off second best. Holt, trick over with the Graffitic Flux, wants to save that for the last fight. The USA knows they have to disengage. If they get blown out here, it is over. And they may not have a choice. Here's the Flux. Space caught in the middle of it. Corey went down as they chased him, piled on him one after another. Raucous hit with an accretion just outside of spawn. And now Super has to hold the fort for as long as he can. Mock, drag, kicking and screaming out to the battlefield. And South Korea are going to get the map done. Only a minute added on for USA. South Korea are going to have over three minutes when we go to extra innings here on this map. Still having so much time in the bank makes a huge difference now. And they can rest easy as they try and set up for extra innings in just a moment. Gibraltar is the kind of map where uh, if you get ahead of yourself, you can be punished greatly, especially on this first part of the map. You notice that South Korea are defending first as they had a little bit more time left in their bank after they as well completed the map. Matt, to the USA go yes. for a Bastion type composition? Do they try and steamroll it, it's, it's very risky. If you go for the Bastion, South Korea was able to stop it at the beginning last time. It was really just the coalescence early from Raucus and two kills from space that prevented you from having to switch off of it right away. They go Reaper Doom at the beginning. Will they try and speed onto them anyway? South Korea like they did last time, even uh, without a Bastion here? No, well, they, what they what happens here is they don't see the Maywall up on the high ground, so they don't come through the lower. They play the first corner, but this is where we see a lot of teams that used to play anyway. Much more standard uh, opening here for these two teams. Well behaved indeed, there's a lot on the line. <laughs> and Super's life was too, he just didn't know it. Tricobin has traded out though in the USA, playing safe here. Trying to find an advantage. 
Sinatra has to get some more kills though. Mana was a good opener. And Architect is going to stay here. Even if South Korea have lost this fight potentially, they will fight on the cart. And they've already played 40 seconds off the yeah. clock. And their intent is not to win that fight. On offense, you have such a great spawn advantage there. And Doomfist can be so devastating that you're not really intending to win that fight if you're South Korea. You want to get some ultimates, come into this next fight in open area, and take that one. This is what South Korea want, and let's see if it pays off for them. Sinatra back to friendly lines. The Holt, he's kept alive somehow. Moth and Raucus keep him standing. Here's the double call lessons coming out now. Raucus using it equal parts defensively and offensively. And Mano's the first casualty. The best possible result for the United States. Sinatra over the top of the fight. And this is just what the doctor ordered. Just bit ocean here on the cart for South Korea. So now that USA, they'll be able to take that first point. It's huge. What do they decide to do? You could make some changes here. If you wanted to come out with a Bastion, but oh, it's, it's bad for South Korea. Yeah. Both of their tanks get the forward spawn. This is going to be so much payload progress here for Team USA. Supercharger for both Super and Mano. Mano will be a little bit late getting back, though, as he's just spawned. So all of South Korea have to give this extra distance away to the USA. With the amount of ults online in this fight, Oh, that's clever. Space, okay, trying to stall out a little bit, maybe trying to delay, find a kill there with the Gravitic Flux. It didn't work out, though. So Sinatra goes back empty-handed, and the rule fight begins. Supercharger thrown down now on a sound barrier from South Korea. They are committing to this fight, but so are their nemeses. The USA find the first kill in this fight. Both Superchargers are down, and Corey is oh, in the house! Big. Team USA on a roll here in extra innings. That will be their second checkpoint, and look at the spawns. Oh, it is going bad for South Korea. That is three players over the side. They want to spawn with their teammates in the back, but just about as bad as it can get. You know, we, we've seen a lot from the damage dealers of Team USA, but Space right now is sitting on a crazy game. 57 limbs, 24 final blows, and only eight deaths on Sigma. More work to do, South Korea. They've got to find a way to stop this and stop it soon. Corey trying to dive deep, but Sinatra makes the trade. Both Reapers are out of the picture. Quickly trying to ferret himself away in the side room. Sinatra is able to get his health back, but he was watched the whole time. Haxal, eagle eye. And now he can clean up this fight. Raucus is going to be struggling there as Haxel cleans him up, doesn't want to move into a room with him. Five checkpoints, 45.62 meters, and the USA are going to have to be happy with that. It's all they're going to get. Oh, I mean, that is... It is a tremendous push there, considering you had a minute to go. South Korea probably came into extra, extra time here, you know, three minutes to a minute. You felt like you had complete control of this game. Now all of the pressure is on. I think they're probably deciding, what do they want to do? Do they want to run the Bastion? Do they want to run the Far Hanzo again? Because you have no idea what Team USA could come out. Team USA could come out, play that Bastion setup again. It could just dwindle clock, just burn time, burn time, burn time. You've earned enough payload progress to be able to do that now if you're Team USA. You have way more options now than you did before. The most important fight on this half is going to be the second one. Yes. USA are more than happy to take a fairly cheap fight. If they can, you know, win uh, close to South Korea spawn, they'll take that one. But it's that second fight, trying to get back in position. Last time the USA defended, they were not ready. They staggered in for that second fight, and they were picked apart. That's what let South Korea have so much time on the bank. But USA put themselves in a winning position with is, that ridiculous and, and run. And this is all, Team USA's composition right now is just built around burning clock because you're going to be able to play this just have Sinatra switch to the Doom right he is on May he does not play May a ton he is on May right now to play up play the cart and then what will happen is they will lose the fight eventually I mean you would think right I mean, it'd be crazy if they held at the beginning it's a nice wall too but now he'll be able if they're they're holding this for a while to go doom this and they keep everybody else's ultimate charge so. oh the spirit of selfless is getting channeled out here Oh, hello, Mano. He's able to sneak back inside. Corey in trouble there, though. Finally caught by Haxal. But, but you're fine with this. 
Like, uh, this, this is exactly what Team USA wanted. Even just making it costly, making it long. The clock now, I mean, look, when they get the second fight, there may be only like a minute and 30 on the clock. Sinatra looking for Haxal here, trying to get the freeze. Almost got it, but an immortality field will foil him. He goes into Ice Block, throws the wall up. There's a barrier in the way, though. Architect looking for an angle here. He's going to find it eventually. That hole. Oh, the biotic grenade as well. Everything thrown to the USA. Suffice it to say, it was enough, but it was quite a lot. And, but they just needed to get it moving. Now I think Sinatra, you probably, if you're, you're going to see the Bastion play here from South Korea, they're not going to switch off of it. He probably now has to play the mate. So just like how we saw Bedoshin go Ana, Rockus will do the same here. It's a, you control the high ground with Ana, no coalescence, so you get way more value out of Ana's kit here than Moira. It's tough for South Korea to reach him as well. They're going to go low. They're going to push in super sleeping right now, though. Bedoshin caught him. Here's the Blizzard. And the USA just walked into a trap. It sprung! And they are frozen solid. Architect, not exactly the most scintillating work of his day, but it's honest work, Matt. And I mean, maybe you go low here, you, you, you force out more ultimates, you start to build more ultimates of your own. I mean, Team USA, they know they have the luxury, if you see the top of your screen, of, of this map going a very long time. And look at how much clock they burned. Two Sinatra, minutes already. Sinatra can stall here, trying to break line of sight. Architect's on that high ground. But Ocean sleeped out on towards Super. Now in mana. Architect drops in. He's found one already. Who is he? Frozen solid. They're able to shut down the Nano Boosted Bastion. The USA come up with the answer. Will it be enough? And how did they get that pick off on the mono? He's playing the Orisa over by the cart, but I believe it's Raucus who's able to get the pick off onto him. Matt, That's huge. Matt, it's happening. And now South Korea, you're forced to switch off of the Bastion. So now you just have the Reaper kind of going and trying. No ultimate charge. You're going to go back to the spawn here for Moth to try and bring Rockus back into the fight. You have the opportunity to get a Nano Death Blossom here for Team USA to put this map away. Grim determination for South Korea now as they know this is their last chance. And they have almost nothing to work with but the brains between their ears. Space awaits the advance and here it is. Gravitic Flux, where does it go? Underneath Haxel, he's caught the Doomfist. Haxel's out of the picture and Corey now breaking it down on the point. Four players left to make it three, and the USA rears its head and says, thanks for coming. Gibraltar belongs to us. That is one of the wildest games we have seen in a bit. Space is a monster on the Sigma, man. 66 to live. Over 20% of the team's overall damage. Crazy performance from human glory there to put Team USA one map away from the gold medal match. We'll have that map. Can they do it after this? BlizzCon 2019 is brought to you by T-Mobile. Their newest signal goes farther than ever, and it's built 5G ready. Intel, the official CPU partner of BlizzCon. Cisco, the official networking partner of BlizzCon. And by HyperX. We're all gamers.
Ladies and gentlemen, for the second time in this particular tournament, the United States of America stand on the precipice of a victory against South Korea. This time, though, for South Korea, it would be lethal. A last chance to get a map back and stay alive in this series, Matt. And, you know, the series has been back and forth, uh, start to finish, right? But it, Team USA has looked like the more decisive, the more confident team in the last two maps. I think they needed that first map. It was close to uh, Busan. South Korea ends up taking it. But I think they need a little bit of that wake up. They've been here for a while, right? It takes a while to get in the, the flow of play. We have already seen South Korea today in a match. So now that we've seen the Team USA warm up the last two maps, they really start to fire on all cylinders. Raucous, space, multiple individuals on this United States roster with an absolutely massive performance on Gibraltar. And it, 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 it takes that to try and go all the way in yes. overtime like they did on that map. Yeah, I told you that second fight is the most important. Here's a head-to-head, Choyobin -head, and Space, our Sigma players in that last match. Yeah, now you see Space leads in terms of the final blows. The accretion kills about even. The stuns Choi is phenomenal of that. And then Space keeps it low on the death side. But the Space, we didn't get a chance to see him play Sigma because the Valiant don't make it to the playoffs. Choyobin, one of the best Sigmas that we had in the playoffs, but Space, he's been grinding the hero on the ladder. I believe he hit rank one in terms of, uh, you know, SR, ladder. You know, uh, but to see him come out and play it at this level, I know that he hasn't been playing in the competitive environment in a, a few months now, right? So you can play it on ladder. It's a little bit different. You played in scrims. Okay, fine. But to come out here and play it against Choi at this level, extremely impressive. We do have a sub here for South Korea. So Carpe does come back in. Worth to note, they win map one with Carpe. They put in Hacksaw for two and three. They end up losing them. So you come back with Carpe, you think maybe that changes some things up. Carpe can now play the Reaper. You can have Architect play the Doom. And of course, if you, if you were to need things like Fire, well, that can be offered. Architect, Architect can do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's why you love keeping Architect in the lineup at all times. Horizon Lunar Colony is gonna be our fourth map in this series and match point again for the USA. How this happen on Assault? be quite crazy and there are options here for South Korea though they will be starting on the attacking side so first we will peruse the defensive offering of the US you know a lot of different options you can play on horizon uh, you, you can play the bastion I mean this is really kind of where we saw bastion play a ton right and then teams started to experiment with it on other maps and started to work out so looks like Sinatra comes out on the bastion the interesting shout here is Corey on the Widowmaker so this is going to be very difficult because he can play like off angles, right? You can't just ignore him. A lot like how Busan was, right? When they played Bastion Widowmaker, they allowed Corey to just take shots for free from the side. So they're probably going to use the Symmetra Teleporter, get Carpe into a spot where he can check, see what they're running, and then we'll see what South Korea decides to do. Not every Widowmaker can succeed with this kind of strategy. It has to be the one of those players with that singular ability to take a game over on their own, and Corey is every bit that individual. Carpe switches over to Hanzo. Look at South Korea, a little bit of extra shield pressure. They have the Zenyatta and the Batiste. But how do you get through this without a Lucio? Like, you're, you're, you have the main wall, right, to get by, but I think you're gonna have a very difficult time. They do get the Bastion moving here, but like, closing in on this, it's going to take a very long time for South Korea to develop any type of offense. The USA don't have a mate, so they can't just wall South Korea out in the open. What a tank! <laughs> that was ridiculous. Chuck Urban goes to the underside here, tries to hit the crease, but is he baiting this in? Oh, Sinatra they has to be careful. In. They get rid of Chuck Urban, and now things are looking a little bit dicey for South Korea. The middle of the map is a crucible, and they are getting crushed. And I mean, the one way you can get Bastion moving is with like the shield pressure, right? with the Zen, with the Hanzo, the Maywall. But if you can't, like, there's no threat for Team USA that like when Sinatra is moving, they're going to be in a position where they can capitalize and jump on it, right? Is this enough shield pressure that South Korea have? Can they force a rotation just by I mean, they can't play, they can't play Farah. I mean, the Farah would just get ripped apart by the Widow here. I mean, you would have just had to like keep like going in between the, the, the walls and whatnot to just kind of get rockets every once in a while. It would be very difficult to play, so that's why you have to play the May. Okay, they've halted Sinatra to the low ground. He's dropped, the rest of the USA have to drop as well. This is the opening that South Korea were looking for. An accretion to get rid of that immortality field, and Tokoban's gonna try and work from the fringes here. 
Raucus though is keeping his head down. Across the map on that high ground, the Ana is kept safe and able to heal the rest of the USA up. But it's Corey who's on the point, who takes out the May, so you have no May wall to really kind of push onto the Bastion again. Now you get a nano boost here from Raucus onto Sinatra. Is Matt, Team USA, they, they just seem to be flexing right now. Time is running out for South Korea. They have to come up with the answer. They have to break this code. And you're playing Zen for the extra shield break and the transcendence, but could you have just played like the, the, the Lucio for the speed and the sound barrier, right? And actually force the, you, if you had the Lucio here, you could potentially, you know, get up into the stairs, right? Move the Bastion, get on the quarry. This will be a dragon from Carpe to the high ground. A little bit off to the left there. Yeah, the mortality was... field from Mob keeps him alive. He doesn't really have self healing on a very low cooldown, so he needs to wait. But Raucus does so much from this position, man. Who, who contests him? This is tricky. Raucus definitely has to keep that trigger finger down. He wasn't able to keep Sinatra alive. The Discord Orb oh, was what bad. allowed the Gravitic Flux to remove him. Jojovin trying to push up a little bit more now, and it looks like they have finally broken through. South Korea. Don't even have to use that many of their ultimate abilities, man. No. That is probably the most significant part of this success. They use the dragon to just buy themselves some space. I mean, they, they force out immortality field with it. Then they end up using their Gravitic Flux. And Rock is not able to heal the players up in time. So South Korea does take a little bit to materialize, but they are able to take that first point. I mean, Vidosum was a big part of that. Just firing at Sinatra with the Discord Orb on him. He's done more damage than Carpe so far. Zenyatto, high risk, high reward. Now Sinatra sits up here and again poses another problem to South Korea. Can you answer this positioning? Immortality field's taken down. The USA quickly have to drop one spawn. So this is forcing rotation. This is what it looks like. Supercharger thrown down, but Dojo's going to try and sit safe on the high ground. Going to hurl himself with the rest of his team with the transcendence, but they've really lost IDK. But these have been traded out. Nano boost given. Sinatra might get caught in the dragon strike here. No, he pushes ahead. Kinetic grasp. Wall throwing up to try and keep him out of the action, but he will not be denied. In the meantime, Corey flinging in arrows. Another one on Carpe. Three for the man, and Sinatra does the rest. Oh man, we hyped up Corey's Hanzo a little bit earlier. You got a chance to see it there. A few final blows in the fight, but South Korea, they do get a tick of permanent progress. They get just under 50% of the point. They have to use a lot of their ultimates to get that progress though. So now for a fight or two, Team USA will have the ultimate advantage. South Korea now again to approach with very few of those abilities, but last time, Matt, it was the Gravitic Flux that opened up the fight. They'll have it again here. Space has found Trick Hogan for long range. Oh, South Korea have to back up now. <laughs> nice accretion here. That is <laughs> Space is a human catapult. You can see Super and Space constantly body blocking for Sinatra, whether it be with the fortifying, kinetic grass, the shielding as well. Now we have a dragon here available for Corey. So you can get a halt with the dragon up to the high ground here for Team USA. You can win a fight relatively cheaply. So as Oban moves up, he's trying to play his own kind of off angle here. Dragon Strike will try and deny that high ground away from South Korea, but they have an immortality field which can't be destroyed. Great angle on that one there from IDK. Sinatra's down. The door is open. Can South Korea take what's theirs? Gravitic Flux, Corey's caught in it, and he's taken down by the Hypersphere, Tui Kobe, he's not done yet. Tries to send an increasing into the main line of the USA, and Carpe gets the Dragon Strike that he would have dreamed of. Now South Korea, they got themselves in this game. They complete the map, they take both points with a minute 11 in the bank, so... The Hanzo from Carpe there towards the end, able to get a nice Dragon Strike from the side, and you see how much Corey was being induced at the beginning. They take out Sinatra, right? Take a look at Carpe's dragon coming from the backside of the spawn. Very difficult to predict where this is coming from. You have no idea where it's coming from in general. <laughs> Through the ant matrix as well, so nobody could get any type of use of that. The, the most interesting part I thought was when uh, they take out Sinatra, Corey gets one. Choi, he, he's up in the air as Sigma with his Gravitic Flux, and he sees both tanks, and then he sees Corey on his own off to the side. He decides to use the Flux to just take Corey out. You don't want him just dancing around on the point on the Hanzo. You know, another pick or two, right? Could have swung that in Team USA's favor because they do have the preferred spawns there. Now we'll get to see 
what South Korea does on defense. It looks like, at least at the beginning here, uh, still an opportunity to change. They're going to go with the Doom Reaper. What's so interesting about uh, USA setup is that Sinatra wasn't actually the one doing the damage. He got three final blows, two deaths. It was all the attention that was on him, though, yes. that was the most damaging. Because Corey goes nine final blows in two deaths. He's able to make the most of the fact that everybody's looking at Sinatra. Oh, I mean, uh, it opens up a, it opens up so many lanes for Corey. Yeah, when they're playing the double shield with the Bastion, he's playing Widowmaker, Hanzo, like, he's able to just sit off to the side, and all he's got to do is hit shots. And uh, of course, he's pretty good at hitting shots, so if you can give him that much space, he's going to do work with it. Sinatra will scout, and then they'll figure out what they want to run on offense. One minute and 11 seconds was the time bank and left for South Korea. Uh, to be fair, you could play Sombra here. Uh, we did see some of this during the golf. We saw more Sombra play start to creep in so depends just there are some teams that have managed to get a better handle on it yeah some just don't really feel like they're quite there yet i, I watched the goal i would have thought that it was one of the best ways to deal with this this composition what's sinatra looking for here potentially hacksaw trying to get down right i mean you hack the doomfist he's oh, oh my to try to jump on carpet get get him eventually it's a one for one though matt super's in a bit of trouble he needs that healing from raucous Nah, the hole is going to make it hard for him. Nicely done by South Korea. USA still fighting on the point, and why wouldn't you? But very clever. Great response to South Korea to come and take that point there. You see, it almost looks like Sinatra tries to bait Carpe back and has a couple of mates on the point ready to fight with him. Yeah, and what you lose here with having the Sombra in is uh, basically just that you know, brawler type of style, insta-kill potential. And uh, yeah, they, they give up on it right away. So they'll go over to Doomfist. As when these teams have been in the mirror, Team USA has come out on top in a lot of those fights. Back to basics for the USA. To the high ground. Do they see the teleport coming in behind them? Corey is up here as well. Architect doesn't really have the bandwidth to worry about it for the time being, though. He just lands a punch, backs up. Super is copying the brunt of this. And he crumbles. Architect! Oh. So nasty. They just push right up into the coalescence there. South Korea now on defense, windling the clock of Team USA. Coming into this next fight, they'll have Mono, the ability to put down the supercharger when they come up the stairs. It's very difficult for Team USA if they take that angle because they're gonna have to get around the top corner of the stairs, running into the supercharger if that's what South Korea decides to do. Yeah, they're, they're giving South Korea a pitch battle, a head-to-head. -head. Architect just chooses where he wants to drop down now. Space and Sinatra so low, both of them fall instantly. USA look like they're stumped. Minute 45 on the clock, they now have to come up with an answer of their own. Oh, I mean, it is a difficult place to get through. For Team USA, you're really building around this next opportunity or the next two, depending on what you decide to do. You're going to have six ultimates available for Team USA. Which ones are uh, you probably going to end up having the sound barrier at some point? You could coalesce the force out the other coalesce. That's a really early flux here from Choi. Down barrier still had to be used by the USA though, so it's a yep. trade. Architect though was caught a little bit far forward. The rest of South Korea wasn't ready to help him out. And instead of figuring it out, the USA allows South Korea to make the mistake. Then they capitalize. And they'll set up on the point here. The South Korea have to try and regroup with what they have. They do get Sinatra. There is a fighting chance here, absolutely. Yeah, and they still have a, a, four players alive here. And so a is not over. Coalescence here from Bidoshin. That's how the fight starts. Corey's just going to try and hold the door a little bit. Looking for Bidoshin. Couple shots to get the job done. He's so low to Coalescence. It's burning oh, it wow. down. Choi Yeoman drops in. He saved the day. South Korea had no business holding that point. <laughs> and yet that is exactly what they've done. Oh, and Bidoshin is so low. He is basically one shot away. Corey goes in the wraith form to get a reload, tries to put a shot in, but Choyobin switching to the wrecking ball in the final moments, comes down with the slam, takes him out. Sinatra goes over to Sombra here. This is it. Final stands. South Korea look to equalize and force the map five. Sinatra gets behind Manu. Early hack. No halt available for the next few seconds. Sinatra faces a bunch of scrutiny, but he's able to get out. Pressuring Mano. Super and Corey get the job done together. Now he's looking for Bidoshin. This time there's no coalescence available. And in the dying moments, the USA seem to have figured it out. At the 11th hour, they take point A. And it's game. It's still on. It is not pretty, though. South Korea put together a tremendous defense. And 
Now, let's see if they can hold on to point B. Sinatra, you see on the Sombra, going up to the high ground. Going to try and hack one of these shield tanks, potentially. Close to an EMP. That could be a winner there. USA getting much more value out of the Sombra this time around. Ooh, Sinatra revealed there by those hypersphere's good spy checking there from Choi. You, know, you could potentially get to like a EMP death boss some type of combo. The issue is, is for USA, you're gonna have to figure out how to draw these players down on the point to get this EMP. EMP! Three players connected with that one, but those were still able to get the cold lessons. It's a one for one, but with Raucous down now, USA kind of running out of room to breathe. Space is able to hit the, the accretion, but everyone on South Korea had the sound barrier. USA could not capitalize on that EMP. But you do trade, though. I mean, you trade EMP for two support ults. I mean, that is a good trade. Now Sinatra will go over to Doomfist. So there's not really many other ways they would have been able to get both support ults out of South Korea. And they're able to do it there with just that one. And now they can come back with two support ultimates of their own, a supercharger. Now USA has a real chance. Maybe that was the plan all along. We'll never know. Pulse brings the USA to the low ground. Sinatra stunned up briefly. Supercharger, Death Blossom. It's just him right now, and he has to use the adapted shield. Carpe switches to the Widowmaker in the backside, but the shield put right in his way. Walkers and Co knew exactly how to deal with that, and Space just throws the barrier up. One minute left. They still need to get the cap, and they've done it. 11 seconds separates these two. Horizon Luna Colony is going all the way. Team USA able to complete. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi, Connie. That's some accident. I can help you file a claim on the State Farm app. My insurance app doesn't do that. Indeed. Let's split a cab to the con. Ah! Gibraltar went to overtime. South Korea had a larger time bank there as well, but Horizon Luna Colony is a little bit of a different beast. Defense South Korea are gonna go again with that standard composition. This could be, I mean, if Team USA decides to run this, this is an all-in type of play. I mean, a minute ago, if you're gonna run this, you have to have a pretty good feeling you can get a draw out of this if it doesn't work, so. The plan here, if this is what they roll with, they'll be trying to get the Bastion onto the point and force South Korea down into a brawl fight against the Bastion on the, p the, the point. The it's the cheese, baby! There it is. Up they go! Oh. They go left! Oh no, the country's open! He could be in deep trouble here, and Mano is burned to the ground! The United States are going for something a little bit special, and the time was right! One tick on the point, they still have Sinatra, Corey is so charged up now, Architect is going to do so much, but Corey, he's beaming, he's lasering them down! Uh, and Mitch, they probably expected them to TP straight to the point, but Team USA goes a little bit to the left, and it seems like South Korea just caught off guard, and oh! they get oh, oh, boy. A, that is massive! My word! As now you're playing with house money of your Team USA. I mean, if you get any type of progress here on B, you are sitting pretty. Is this the fashion that South Korea get knocked out of contention? Corey is very close to a barrier as well. That's going to make life incredibly hard for South Korea. They've got to push in. They know they've got to get aggressive gear. Turret's being thrown in. There's a wall in the way. Corey tries to nice. get on the high ground, but he's sleeping. Sinatra's gotten there, though. He has the position. He was able to use the teleporter. 
Super drops down, but Sinatra's missing. Carpe was able to go upstairs and get rid of the infestation. That might not get him out of trouble, though. Architect is in danger. Super tries to push up, but doesn't have a fortify available now, and Raucus is down. Corey's able to get Kudoshin, but that'll be it. The USA had to bring space now. The auxiliary rolls on into the point to try and stall out. They have a real crack at it, Matt. They do, but it's going to pull them up short. They'll get that third checkpoint, and you better believe they'll be pleased. Now, South Korea, they have their backs against the wall. They, they were not able to do, break the setup of Team USA quickly there on their first attack. You remember back in a, it's a little bit ago, but Sinatra on the Bastion, Corey on the Widowmaker, they were able to hold for a decent amount of time with that setup. It's a Carpe Dragon Strike that really kind of opens it up, splits the team off, Arctic with a like May Wall. They, they didn't but really. You don't, have, you don't have time to build that. They didn't fundamentally know how to unravel that setup. They just. Yeah. They were able to move in with some decent ultimate economy and made a good pick. So, they so it's an interesting dilemma here for South Korea. Because you know how to break it. You broke it last time. But you don't really have the luxury of having that time to build these ultimates. Well, then they go with it again. Uh, the only thing here is now Team USA can Attack run a May of their own. So this will be a different look. So you have Corey on the Bastion. Sinatra on the mace. So this, this is, is a much the nastier different look. version of this composition. Yes, I would say so. This is the composition that uh, sent the San Francisco Shock essentially to the lower bracket in our Overwatch League playoffs and also <laughs> kind of caused a lot of problems for the Vancouver Titans in the finals of that tournament. And that's why I think Carpe will come out on Sombra and they'll make a decision after that. But still, a minute and 11 seconds is not a lot of time. Just because they see the composition doesn't necessarily mean that South Korea will know how to work around it. Let's see what they go for. Hanzo and May. And the Batiste here. It's the same setup they ran on offense the last time. They were able to break it. The only difference here is that USA is running a May instead of the Widowmaker. Corey walled up. There was actually a, a barrier put there for him still by space. He has to be patient here in South Korea. Under cover of the wall, trying to get to the point, but it's hot by making things complicated. Carpe, hit nice by a well. grenade. Immortality Field got thrown down. Corey didn't expect that. He's going to the low ground. Here's the opening for South Korea. Mano's looking a little bit low though, but space. Everyone is sandwiched in between South Korea. USA, it's gone horribly wrong. That is such a beautiful halt from Mano as Corey's trying to move around. Not able to stay alive as Sinatra here. I mean, he wants to try and stall. Yeah. He was discorded. What do you have here? They'll be able to get the point. They're going to have an Ant Matrix here. Could you Ant Matrix Carpe up from the high ground? Just one tick, Matt. That's all South Korea need here. Corey to the Hanzo. Architect. IDK ready now to deploy the amplification matrix. Time to go. Immortality field first just to be safe. Make sure no one got picked off. You would say they break line of sight. They try and get back to safety, but they force the drop to the low ground. Carpe getting a lot of free damage, and this Dragon Strike, man, this Dragon Strike could be really scary. Space Whoa. finds two, though. Double accretion. Are you kidding me? Corey finds one as well, and South Korea can't get it done. Horizon ends in a draw. What crazy ending there is. They get the Ant Matrix, they get the Dragon, they're just not able to do anything with it because Space picks up the 2K. Unbelievable accretion to stop South Korea in their tracks when they looked poised to take this one all the way. They won't get a map win here and the USA will get another chance to end the series right after this.
not only have South Korea earned themselves a stay of execution, but they've given themselves another opportunity to equalize this series. Assault is a draw. It means that we move on to the next map without awarding a point to either team. Yes, yeah, so it'll be a control map up next. South Korea, one map number one control. If they were to win this, we would go to another control to decide it. So, they make no substitutions. They go with the same roster that they started uh, the beginning of the series at, Carpe in. Now, they end up winning that map number one. They draw Horizon with Carpe in the lineup. It's a huge map. I mean, uh, you win this here if you're South Korea, you feel like you have really, uh, you have the advantage in the series. I mean, uh, all the pressure. I mean, a lot of people in the venue cheered on Team USA. Now, they, they go with their backs against the wall, right? You're kind of, you, you've already won three. You know, you know, the fourth is nice, but I mean, it, it's really the pressure on Team USA at that point. I'm sure you've been here yourself, Matt, you know, uh, on the precipice of you know, winning a very big series and just trying to find that last little bit of effort to close it out. Worrying that maybe, do you have it? Do you have it in you? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's an odd scenario. Like, you always kind of hear people uh, talk about, like, oh, like getting the last map or getting this one's like the hardest one. And it's almost, it's hard because of the pressure you put on yourself, right? Like, you know how close you are, you know how bad you want it. And that's when you kind of, the pressure starts to sit in. It's with yourself. It's not really in the, the, the scene of, uh, you know, the venue and everybody cheering. I think, uh, you know, the, the, the players at this point, they're used to it. It's just the internal pressure of just wanting to get there, wanting to achieve it, and then getting it done. Three years, three World Cups, the USA have exited in heartbreaking circumstances. They have themselves now a chance to advance, potentially for gold medal, and getting rid of an age-old rival. Well, that would be something special. Genji. Symmetric Genji, Ryan Sim. What on earth for the win here? So uh, we actually did a Canada game and we saw XQC get pretty decent value out of the Reinhardt on this exact point. Because uh, you can just use Reinhardt in just like a battle mode, right? They're not running a May South Korea to split him off. So get super swinging the hammer and there he goes. The king is returned to Reinhardt. Great opener. Sinatra here just trying to stay scarce for the time being. Punishing Mano. We have been treated to quite the display in this series, and it just keeps getting better! And that hammer, that looks hard. Now you build up, you use Reinhardt like, uh, it's just like, like a, almost like how we used to talk about Reaper, right? Where you just barrel the Reaper into the back line and just kind of, you, you use him as like a bull, right? Ryan, there, you're using him the same way here. I mean, you're getting aggressive. The shield is kind of secondary here in this type of setup. Well, it's early. Earth Shatter! That's a connection. Carpe out of the fight before it begins. Super trying to charge in to follow up, but he's confident in his healers and he's going to keep swinging. Look at that reposition with the teleporter. South Korea struggling to keep eyes on them, but getting rid of Sinatra is going to release some of that pressure. Watch out, though. Corey's heating up. Oh, the microwave! Oh, it's it's disgusting! Uh, Symmetra, she reloads, gets stronger when the other team has the shields out. Corey farms those shields up. They stay alive long enough to be able to get the value off of it. Take a look at this. Another shatter, Gravitic Flux. A blade here for Sinatra. This is everything you could ask for. Dragonblade in. Force the sound barrier up. Pretty sore tonight. He's going to be happy with that. Carpe done dead in those big shadow from Super. Architect and Carpe both go down. And South Korea essentially have their wings clipped. Corey's still up here on the sim. And you see just shooting. Now, baby. Shooting that barrier. Just keeping that little bit of extra charge. Now he's going to throw the turrets back on the point. Sinatra now goes over to Junkrat here. This is turning the mystery no, here. This is obscene. This is a travesty! They're making a mockery of South Korea right now! Overtime comes around. Remote mine out from Sinatra. Corey down. Only came was able to find him early in the fight. Here another remote mine used just as he came down. Architect had to get back out. He's a group in his blood. Oh, great group away, but it's not going enough to keep them alive. South Korea, they finally come up with an answer here. And credit to him, because who knows how that we're going to solve that weird compositional problem. Still, uh, for Team USA, they use all of the... South Korea uses all their ultimates there. Now you make the switch over to Arisa, the Doomfist. 
the Reaper. You'll have your own coalescence coming in here. You give yourself a chance. I mean, look at Tonka Korea. They have no ultimates here. They're not really close. Coalescence of Rome just still letting go straight away. Mewtwo knocked out. Architect comes off second base. The USA punch second, and it pays off. Sinatra just trying to duel it out here, but South Korea are in deep, deep trouble. And the USA can transition to the point and claim this round. With some of the weirdest compositions I think I've ever seen, especially in this era of Overwatch, the USA take the point back, they make a statement, they dare South Korea to challenge them! One round of control away for Team USA to knock out South Korea and get to the gold medal match. And I think, you know, South Korea just did not know how to deal with the Symmetra, the the, the Genji, uh, the Reinhardt, they're such an odd composition. I noticed you didn't offer up any solutions through, no, during the round it's either. An, uh, it's just, <laughs> it, it's weird. I mean, that's the best way you can, it, you know, these players, they're just so used to seeing the same things all the time. When you get served up something that odd, you kind of, you just kind of freeze up, throwing stuff, at, throwing stuff at the wall to try and break it. So, this point though, I think you're going to see played way more standard. So, Corey and Carpe, they'll teleport their teams forward, they will go to Reaper. Oh, yeah. South Korea probably have no idea what to expect here. They are going to see a more friendly composition. If that's even possible from the USA. Space has taken a ton of damage early here, but so is Choi Jovan. South Korea have to step back, but look, Sinatra sees his opening an opportunity just when South Korea were trying to get some space. He closes the gap and closes the deal. And this will be an easy fight win for Team USA. Built off of Sinatra's doom. Have control of the point now. Coalescence already available for both Moyers in this next fight to kick things off. You'll probably see that to get it started, but Sinatra is a good seismic slam away from a meteor strike. Way ahead in terms of that build up to Architect. We're going down already. Architect's able to get the punch though. Martin's in trouble. He's surrounded. South Korea, we have miscalculation it's positioning, they left Mano on an island. The positioning of South Korea has not been good, and that is one thing that Josh was talking about. We were watching the Denmark game, and he was like, I do not think this team, they are not on the same page. You see so many players just split, taking their own battles all over the place. It's coming back to bite them now. 43% and counting. The United States have... Built up quite small percentage there. Sinatra goes on in first. Oh my. A lot of damage on Troy Hoban. He's able to stay most of it off. Corey just wants to push in. You can see that aggression. The USA, they want it so badly, Matt. They don't give South Korea a chance to even set up for the fight. And this is the feeling we were talking about going into the map. The players on USA, they know the scenario. They know how hard over the last few years they've worked to get to this point, and they are one fight potentially away from doing it. Disappointment after disappointment. Harsh fans, critical friends, and oh, the big. Space drops it down. Corey is very low as the sound barrier for South Korea. Architect comes in, three feet, make it four. Oh, oh my! Architect lights up the stage with five kills. Well, isn't that a response? It had to be there, Matt. I mean, you know, they're wavering on the ropes, and Architect sends a haymaker. We can take a look at this again as he comes down with a meteor strike, the halt is good, and then he just starts taking names after that. Has this taken the wind out of the USA sails? They're one fight away. Two support off to work with yet, and yet South Korea know they've got to go for this right now. Sound barrier keeps USA alive. Moth gets Mano, that's the first. But also with the coalescence. That one is expired, but allowed Carpe to find Sinatra. Tohoven tries to get the Gravitic Flux, but Architect is still in the mix. Super, he's fortified, so that accretion's not going to bother him too much. Moth almost knocked senseless, he's able to escape just for a moment, and Architect is searching for the Lucio. United States the, the trying Arisa. to get this point back. The, the Aris is a problem here. Super being alive is such a problem here for South Korea. They force South Korea off the point. They're about to capture it. Moth going in, just trying to play safe and keep their healing coming for the time being. But they've lost Sinatra. They've lost Super. They fall like flies. And South Korea regain control. 
pay battle back is you know the super is such a nuisance here for south Korean. the point you pretty much have to kite it until their tanks get back because you cannot dive onto that orisa because you know the fortify is coming and both supports are alive for usa at the time so the players for south korea did a tremendous job playing around that difficult scenario veteran heads of the usa now need to help calm these kids as they're close but they're not there yet corey tries to go in that's two that's three four, and do it four for corey and the usa sound out the curtain calls and south korea See a lot of hugs with the shock guys, right? I mean, you know, Sinatra and Super with Team USA, and you have Architect and Choi over there for South Korea. Probably a little bittersweet for those guys to send their teammates home, but I think they know how much this means to the region. A nation of expectant fans who always turn up for BlizzCon, always make a ruckus. And this time, we see sweet victory. Well, again, it's not over yet. Still need to see more of this brilliance from this fantastically crafted it's United States roster. It's a tremendous point uh, there because you know this is not over for Team USA. Sure, they do get the win here, but you could face off against a team like China in the gold medal match where China has been lights out. I mean, that team is stacked with Overwatch League talent. So if you're Team USA, the coaching staff, you gotta you gotta soak in this moment, but you gotta quickly turn around and understand you did not get the overall job done just yet. You still got a little bit of a way to go because there's going to be a very strong opponent waiting in the gold medal match. You're going to get to see just how much this means to both teams and, you know, big composition, uh, competitions exist in the Overwatch world now and the Overwatch League, but this, this is so important. National pride and, of course, the love of your home fans and We've seen many, many tearful faces and triumphant smiles on this stage, and now we're going to head down to the latter. A victory moment presented by Coca-Cola with Danny and Raucus. Mitchell, Matt, thank you very much. What an amazing series. BlizzCon, make some noise for Team USA. <laughs> Raucus, congratulations. You guys have defeated South Korea not once, but twice in a row. Does that have any special meaning for you guys? For me especially, because in 2017 was my first year ever performing for the World Cup, and we got knocked out the first time against them. And it was a close series, and they went on to win it. So to be able to do it now, not once, but twice, I, I really don't really have words. It's, it's so hard to speak right now, but it, it's such an incredible feeling. All these guys on my team are so damn good. They are the best players in the world. You guys have definitely proved that. Now, you guys are one match away from getting that gold medal. Rock is how confident are you that you and Team USA could win it all, get the gold medal in front of our home crowd? Our team's extremely confident, but we're not going to let it get to us. We need to keep focusing because if we beat them and then don't win it all, then there's no point. So we're going to focus on the next match and we're going to be humble and we're going to be confident and we're going to play like we want to play. Amazing. Thank you so much, Rock. Now moving on. We have our super fan. Congratulations on winning, winning the jersey. Actually, Rock is, I'm going to have you give the jersey to the fan, okay? There you go. Yeah, hug. Thank you guys so much. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Danny. And Raucus definitely put it quite succinctly, saying that if we don't make it all the way, then what is the point? I love that interview with Raucus because you can see the change in just mentality of Team USA from last year to this year. Keyword was humble. Last year they came in, Twitter blowing up, loads of smoke, we're going to win. They came out, they, they got they got blasted, they got home. They, I mean, they, they were a non-factor in the tournament. And I think that was the 
serving of humble pie that they needed a little bit last year. I think now, you know, with the, how the shock have gone this year, you know, you kind of have the core of Team USA built around that. Everybody grows up a bit, they mature, and I think that's really kind of the difference between the teams from last year to this year, which, which allows them to win that match. But it also is not over. I mean, still two tough opponents potentially, you know, will have the match coming up next. One of them will advance to the gold medal match. Absolutely, and it is quite uh, a spicy rivalry between these two nations for the other spot in our gold medal match coming up next. It's going to be France versus China. A lot on the line, a lot of fans very invested here in the arena. So stick around for that one. The Overwatch World Cup 2019, it's far from done. Overwatch World Cup is brought to you by T-Mobile. Their newest signal goes farther than ever, and it's built 5G ready. Omen, the official PC and display of the Overwatch World Cup. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch World Cup. Last two years, I uh, represent France. It's a huge honor for us. Là où personne nous voit. When a sport was recognized in the US or in Korea, it wasn't in France. Unbelievable! It's not represented in team, it's represented in nation, and there's a ton of people watching you because they are French and they want us to win. It's there! 